check. Oh, yeah. Welcome, everybody. It's... Oh, it's too loud. Hold on. Welcome, everybody. It's Toons Day Night. I'm MC Toon, your host for the evening festivities. Tonight, I will be debating some of the people on the Asylum Discord server again. I have kind of a regular uh, attendance there, maybe about every other week, as uh, as the schedule allows. Tonight, I'm going to try something a little different on a Discord server. I don't know if it's ever happened in the history of Discord. A series of one-on-one -on -one debates. <laughs> so, um... Uh, Globers, uh, I'll ask you to just uh, during this uh, two hour window, just for two hours, just uh, step back. When I'm done, definitely jump in and, and uh, you know, sink your claws in. I will have them all warmed up and ready for you in, uh, <laughs> in the server. Um, uh, let me just update you. It's been eight days since the, uh, the evidence as requested by Mark Sargent has been sent to him. Uh, the evidence that he said he will quit Flat Earth tomorrow if he received it. It's been eight days, so seven days ago he was supposed to have deleted his channel and quit Flat Earth forever. He hasn't yet. I'm, I, I, I have no idea why, but he's a truther, so I'm certain he's definitely going to, you know, embrace the truth and be truthful in the words that he says. Well, and if he doesn't do it by tomorrow. I have a, a video going out tomorrow that will just, you know, crush him into little bits. Uh, and be looking for that. I hope you enjoy that. That will be on the, my Conspiracy Tunes channel. So, anyway, I'm going to head over here to there to do... Uh, to the Asylum server. Let me get this so you can see it. Uh, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay. There you're seeing the server. And I'm about to jump in. Let's see what they got going on. That we should be seeing what we're seeing across anyway. So it's not phenomenal to see across. We just have the math wrong. I've been told that. So that's why we moved to 17. And 17.5. And I showed you that. And, and why do flat earthers always choose to be as close as they can to the we lake? We don't. Yeah, we what was your height above the surface of the water? Eight between two and eighteen feet. Both. Why? Why do you choose so low? Why don't you choose like fifty? We feet walk low? down there to see if it's the height giving us the vantage point. So we bring it down and walk down Flat and go. Earthers wow, I can see it standing on the blade on the, with my always. toes in the water too. They have to. And then they you go. To. Why do you do that? It's like, well, because we want to show that it doesn't have to do with the height advantage because we're looking across something flat, remember? No, you're so not. So you don't need a height no, advantage. How, how much flatness is there? Have you measured it? All right. It's, pretty it's hey, repeatedly guys. flat. It's repeatedly <laughs> flat. I don't That's know what that means. <laughs> All right, Tune. Is true. the horizon right. flatter than the plane? Or the right, plane so flatter than the horizon? Hey, hey, everybody. Um, I uh, set this up a while ago with uh, Apocryphon, who's no longer on the server. He's he's moved on to other things. The Hammer and I have been talking. And, and uh, so what I'm going to try to do, everybody here, is uh, just try to have a series of one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversations or debates or whatever. So I've asked a couple uh, Globers and just, uh, just a request to them for two hours, for the next two hours, just sit back and... Uh, and then I'll, I'll ask the same of Flat Earthers if, if just, uh, you know, one at a time or whatever. I'll be happy to talk to you uh, uh, one at a time. I do like a little more order, so that's what I'll ask. So, uh, Hammer, are you are you around? Yes, sir. All right. You said you had, uh, you had something ready. Yes? No, yes? Yes, no? How are you doing this evening? I How am... Kind of... I am super. I did not hear what you said if you were saying something. Yeah, mic check. Hold on one second. <laughs> mic check is in Hawaii, by the way. Can you hear me now? Mic check. Can you oh. hear me now? Yes. Something's different. Nice. 
Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going on. Some weird stuff in my, with my Wi-Fi. Sorry about that. Yeah, how's it going this evening, Mr. McDoom? So wait, can I get this straight? Only the flat earthers can talk now, or did I hear that? Incredibly? Yeah, one at a one and one at a time, please. Just no, no dog piles. You know, last last time I was here, we had some some dog piling, and from 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 my side, I'm like, ah, we don't need to do that. So. So the Globers get punished for the Flat Earthers dogpiling? Uh, no, the Globers were dogpiling last time. Oh, okay. We we were. So we're going to punish the Flat Earthers then? Yeah. No, we're, uh, well, I mean, everybody gets punished by listening to Flat Earthers. But um, no, it's just going to be one <laughs> and one. <laughs> so are you saying you have some Globers lined up or something? No, like no, that? no. What were you I saying? am okay. I am the Glober that is lined up, and I'll and uh, you are the Glober. I am. Okay, the Glober, that's what I yeah. thought. So, and should should there be any flat earthers that are willing to uh, to step forward and and uh, engage? You mean you interrupted a perfectly good conversation that you could have been part of to stop in the middle to pretend nobody's talking? Okay, all right. It was, and, you know, and, this has been and, hey, um, Let me just so, explain. We do we do have like a planned event. I, maybe you didn't catch it. It is a planned event that was pre-planned out. All right, so out. we got the globe. Or where's the flat earther? It has there. already started. So welcome to the McToon's Day Night, uh, hosted by the Asylum. Thank you for having me. Um, hey, uh, I I'm a flat earther, and I have a question. Uh, if you're willing to answer it, sure. And we have a we have somebody to step up to the plate. Please welcome. Who, who are we welcoming here this evening, Mister Sonar Curves? Thank you. Right. Um, okay. I, well, I have a couple questions then, since uh, we're going to be here for a while. All right. There's there's a video I posted um, about. Let's see. You know what? I'll just post it again. Um, so it says it's from Taboo Conspiracy, and it says how a pilot ended the globe. Uh -huh. So what it shows what it shows is a plane uh, flying from I think like Germany to Sao Paulo, Brazil, and it's it's uh, sped up. Uh, and have you watched the video, McToon? I have. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. So instead of me, you know. Well, I guess for the audience, yeah, the audience, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. um, uh, I, I don't know if anybody else ha has seen this video, but what it shows is a plane flying from, like I said, Germany to Sao Paulo, and uh, it does not show um, what Google Earth shows, and that is stars rising as as the plane flies around the globe. Oh, my God. Are you seriously? All right. Okay, uh, we're not talking to you, Nessa Shill. We're talking to McToon here. <laughs> Nessa right. Shill. All right. Yeah. So, uh, yep that that's a that is an interesting globe evidence video. Now, number one, I'll just I'll just point out the flight route that it shows going across the uh, the edge of Africa is not the flight route that would be taken on flat Earth. And flat Earth, it would go off uh, France into the Atlantic. And then stay over the Atlantic almost if the I entire could time. Stop you, so. that that is a, uh, a straw man because this has nothing to do with flat Earth. This is just what the globe is presenting and what what the video is presenting that doesn't match the globe. So we're talking about the globe here. We're not even. We we can call it a pyramid Earth. Uh, we can call it anything else, but mm -hmm. uh, let's stick to the globe. Could cool. you? Cool. All right. Sure. Certainly. All right. I, I will uh, uh, leave off that inconvenient part for you. So the the thing that Google Earth did not do is actually plot the positions of the stars. Google Earth is not a star chart. It doesn't have any any reference, any um, facility to actually plot the correct position of the stars. So when Ben from Taboo Conspiracy uh, did the time lapse the flight using Google Earth? He did not get the actual globe prediction for what the stars should look like on the globe, because that's not what Google Earth is doing. That that's a major claim. I would need a citation for that, showing me that Google Earth doesn't 
Now, how about uh, this? How about stars? since you so are all since stars, Ben, Ben on, is the one that on, claimed. Ben, I, I'm talking. Uh, sure, I, I'm certainly. talking. I, I'm still talking, please. Um, so yeah, like I said, I would I would need some sort of like um, email or like uh, confession from Google Earth themselves, because by you just you know ba uh, baselessly claiming it. Uh, or maybe you could show me somewhere in their program where they failed to actually get, you know, all the stars in the right positions and, you know, plot them accordingly. Right. I, I would I would appreciate some sort of evidence, not just a baseless claim. Thank you. Got it. Got it. So let, let's back it up here. What uh, what taboo taboo conspiracy is claiming that? Well, you Google... already made. Oh, I'm claim. sorry. I was talking. You, you interrupted me. You interrupted me. Oh, let me talk. I interrupted me. I didn't even finish the sentence, and you interrupted me, Where's dickhead. The part we get to clap. That was done excellently. You're already. Who shot. is it? Who is it, McTain? All right. All right. Where are you? Where are you? Dan the Waterman, server muted. All right. So, dickhead, you didn't let me finish one sentence, oh, not, and you cried fair. like a little well, baby. You, you cried like a little baby when I interrupted you. So, shut your face hole and listen. It's time for you to learn. All right. Got it? So, uh, taboo conspiracy using Google Earth is claiming that Google Earth is correctly presenting the star charts and the star movement. So it is incumbent not on me, but on taboo conspiracy to provide documentation or you, if you wanted to, to provide documentation that Google Earth is a charting the uh, not just Google Earth, the positions of things on the Earth, but actually the positions of the stars. Not my claim, his claim. So there you go. Do you have it? No. So you so you retracted your claim. I got I got it. I, I got you to to retract your claim, and that that's fair enough. I'm happy with that result. A win for Fe. Great. That's, no, it's still a loss for Fe be, because because you didn't provide you didn't provide Kadeem. evidence. Sorry, you didn't oh provide God, evidence that the the modeling <laughs> software used was actually modeling the stars. <laughs> Seriously, do you do you have any evidence supporting your claim that that was a correct model? Anything? Well, why wouldn't I? Okay, we take everything Anything? else from Google Earth, and so well, I don't just care. the stars are just I, I don't care. Be, that, does, um, that doesn't mean it's right. Uh, put up there at, at random, right? That doesn't mean it's right. Do you have evidence that I Google Earth? Is hey, plotting the why, correct position why, of the why aren't stars. you holding Google Earth to a higher standard if you're the one that hey, knows that they don't on, have come on, straw man correct there, star chart? Google Earth isn't is Google Earth claiming that they are doing star charting? Is it? I mean Stellarium so Stellarium claims so, that. So you're telling you're telling me they're modeling fake shit again? I, well what else are I'm they asking you to provide evidence that Google Earth is charting star positions. Well, do you're the you one have who that? Said they weren't, it is so your claim. I think the burden of proof is on you, sir. I'm sorry. So that is a perfect reversal of the burden of proof. I am not the one that claimed that Google Earth is correctly charting star positions. You are, and Tampa Do you know there's an actual is. fallacy about that? Yeah, I have the card right here. It's called the burden of proof fallacy. I can read it to you. No, Say that it's the burden of proof. Hey, the burden of proof fallacy. That's hilarious. You did two saying, already. Wait, saying three. that the burden of proof lies not with the person making the claim, but with someone else to disprove. So it is on you or table conspiracy to prove that Google Earth is is charting the star positions. I can't believe you actually are going for this, but you go ahead. That hill, that hill is going to be a great place for you to die on. Well, un until um, you prove otherwise, I'll I'll be happy with the way that, that's what a Google Earth still, gives me. A burden of and, proof um, fallacy. Waiting and, and for you, what waiting for you to show. Because it's not my video. Wh wh well, you, no, you brought it up. Video. You brought it up, so it is your video in this context. This is your evidence that you are presenting. Dude. You are responsible for it. So I ask once more, and you know the answer to this. Can you show me where Google Earth claims that they are charting the positions of the stars in Google Earth? Well, prove to me that they're not. Okay. No. -uh. No. -uh. Yeah. Perfect. Got it. You lost. Okay. So show me where they're not. You lost already. Show me where they're not. Not show my me burden. They're, they're incorrect. Not my burden. Yours. Not so mine. So you're just claiming. Oh, okay. You know what? Then, then not I'll mine. Do the same thing Your burden. You do. You have the with burden. With everything of proof. else. 
you have the burden of proof to support that Google Earth is charting star, star positions. Go ahead. That's not my... That's, it is your claim. That's not what I'm here it for. It is your claim. No, I never claimed it's, that. What are you talking about? You, you totally it's claimed that. You video. mentioned the star positions in Google Earth in Tabu Conspiracy's video. You specifically called them out and you said, it's not what Google Earth is modeling. And so go ahead, show where Google Earth claims that it's charting star positions. Show me where they're not. That's we're, we're not gonna, my we're burden. Go round and round. You my burden. Go round and round. Because because this is your claim it's, that it's they're your, not it's doing your it burden. correctly. Your burden. Do you have evidence supporting your claim? Thank you for not having it. It's not it's, all right. It's not does my anybody burden, okay? does anybody it's, else it's have any any that they're not, flat Earth they're not evidence? True. Anybody have flat Earth evidence this time instead of the globe evidence in that video? It's not globe evidence. It certainly is. It certainly is. It shows. It does show a uh, South Celestial Pole. Ooh, that doesn't work on flat Earth. It shows the. Okay, why, the why route, are you trying to take that route. video as as any proof or evidence when you just claim that it's incorrect? So the, why the, would anything it shows oh, lead no, no. you to any conclusion? Oh, no. I'm talking. You're just being I'm not talking highly, about Google uh, Earth. Dishonest. I'm not talking you're about the Google dishonest. Earth do, um, modeling. I'm talking about the video that was actually from the flight from August of 2016. That video shows that there is a central position of a south rotating rotation, which does not work for any flat Earth model I've seen. We're not talking about the flat Earth model. Model. What's in contention is the globe. Sorry. Well, you didn't present so, the actual. Nice straw man. Again, that's you number four. You didn't present an actual model of the globe star positions. For that, you might want to use Stellarium. Give it a shot. See how that works. Like I said, uh, we, I didn't claim anything about any you model. Absolutely flat did. Earth or, or you globe. specifically claimed that taboo conspiracy modeled the star positions in google earth where does google earth say that it's po correctly positioned uh, all i claimed was the video the title back, on the backtrack, video backtrack backtrack from that got it how a pilot ended got the globe it. that's it got it backtrack from your claim perfect no i never said that yes you did you show totally, me in a recording where you i totally said that. you totally said that it that uh Taboo Conspiracy modeled the star position using Google Earth. I never Google said that. Earth. Stop lying. All right. Got wow, it. this guy's so got the it. recording. Got it. I'm not going to do Show that right now. You go dude. ahead. It's going out on my channel. You can pick it up later. All right. Anybody else want to line up and screw themselves again? Hey, uh, there's no. a guy in the chat. He thinks he's great at chess. I just wanted to let everybody know including your audience that i beat him in chess thank you very much that's all i have to say Super. who the hell was that wow all right we're getting we're getting people accusing you of being a po all right i had chess too um hmm. but it is got true, it though. mic check am i coming through yes is that that one bullet game you lost Right. Oh, you're claiming that I lost it? I still got the... Oh, my the, gosh. All right, Sonar. Uh, yeah. Time to move on. Sonar. No, hold on. Sonar. Sonar. I, I still got the, the PG... What is it called? My PGN God. file. And yeah, you won one PGN out of three files, games. Yeah. I won the other two, and they were bullet games. All right. Yeah, Nobody cares. Beat, so. Look, I, YouTube... I did get, beat you. I can a, beat anybody get, in chess. Get a room. Get a room, guys. Go talk about chess there. All right. <laughs> he brought it up. I know. He started it. All right. Yeah. Anybody here? Well, let me remind you, Flat Earthers, that I have a year and a half old $10,000 challenge to do celestial navigation using only Flat Earth. Um, it has been claimed by Flat Earthers that celestial navigation works on Flat Earth, yet I've never seen one ever do it. So let me just remind you of that. Unclaimed. Year and a half. Unclaimed. Um, now, and I think I'm two months into the $10,000 gravity challenge. Uh, I've gotten a, a simple one 
uh, one person emailed me and said this wasn't really a challenge, but he he proposed he wasn't a flat earther, but he proposed the infinite plane um, uh, idea. Not even much of a hypothesis, but um, that was his idea Mike, there. Mike. Can you hear so, me now? I can. I could hear you before. Okay, I apologize. Go ahead, McDude. Um. So anyway, yeah. Um. Uh, just sitting there unclaimed. These two challenges. Um. Any any flat earthers have a, a replacement for gravity that actually, you know, gives nine point eight meters per second squared. Anybody? Well, there's your problem, MC. Um. I think, uh, well, I declared it today. I don't know, well, I guess I'll say it here for you. Sorry, man, Flat Earth is dead. Um, it there is, are zero is. Flat Earthers. Jan is there are zero Flat Earthers presenting um, uh, any evidence. Um, they they are forever known as Nut Earthers, okay, unless they can give us anything than uh, Nut uh for globe, <laughs> all right? Please present evidence. I'm dying over here. Well, unmute Dan, unmute Dan. Uh, oh, does Dan does Dan have evidence? Ooh, He's right. a flat earther. I know, but does he have evidence? Let's see it. All right, here you go, Dan. Let's hear what you got. Well, well, Dan and his friends have over 35 observations uh, paralleling the Earth in line of sight observations over land, water, and ice, day and night, hot and cold, with laser light reflective sunlight and infrared light. Most importantly, we had to go out and double check what PBS, Discovery, and Nat Geo had said at a location that was within our reach. We've worked at that location and others, and we found that both mainstream representations of that location were provably and demonstrably false. Okay, and are you yes. going to present present evidence and uh, the measurements? What are you going to call evidence? What would you well, like to see? Like I, how? I mean, is Nat Geo enough for you? No, I I'm not National Geographic. I wasn't uh, involved in that, and I didn't cite that as evidence. So for you to cite that as something that I somehow need to talk about is, as globe evidence, I didn't cite that. So. I mean, you are the one okay, claiming well, that the Earth is flat, okay, not so me. I'll, so I'll you... put in chat. I'll put in chat a thirty-five second clip, and I will describe the scenario of what we would expect. Super. At, and you wait, please wait, correct wait, wait, me. Wait, jump wait, in any time what, to what, correct me on oh, any of the math. At when any you time, say okay? what we would expect, so you are going to present you and I. You wait, and wait, I. Hold on, no. I want. I want to make sure that I understand what you're doing. You are going well, to. I'm asking you to correct on, me I wasn't, at any time. I wasn't so done. So allow me to speak. I wasn't you done hear talking. That I'm I have allowing a question. You to jump in at any time and correct me as you, while you watch thirty-five seconds worth of lies. I'll talk. It, so people okay. can understand the distance yeah, and the it. location. Got it. Before right? you do it's, that, though, I just roughly ten miles. God, I just want to be sure that I understand correctly. You are going to tell me what the globe model is. Is that what you're going to do? No. Again, for the third time, I'm going to ask you to correct me if I misrepresent misrepresent us at any point. Us? What do you mean us? Us. The the collective group here that might want an understanding okay, of what but, might happen at ten miles. But are you going to cl make claims about what the globe model predicts? I'm. Just, I want to be clear. Is this a yes? Or, this is a simple yes or no. Ten mile observation. Are you? I'm but, setting up what should the expectations? Certainly. Certainly. At ten miles should be. Maybe we should start with the expectation of a geometric horizon, which of course should be about three miles am i correct or how, not how would you measure a geometric horizon we look for an obstruction in our field I'm of sorry. view as it how as would, no, no, I'm sorry. would have deviated oh, from yeah, my field of view yeah, got which it. is so, straight see so, my field of view okay would hold be straight on and level, hold on let me let me just right? correct you on that but one the for a second not straight and level hold on you you said a geometric horizon and then you said you're going to somehow identify the geometric horizon optically so i want to actually ask you the question how are you going to geometrically we measure the geometric for horizon well, we how are you looking gonna, for no no, no no be be very specific in your answer how are you we going to wait i haven't asked not, the question yet you can't answer the question if i haven't asked it yet you're going to have to listen 
All right, Dan. Hmm. How are you Don't going treat to? Me that way. How Don't treat me I that. will. I will treat you that way if you need to, Dan. Because, I know, and because, I will destroy you. Because so you are because you are constantly interrupting me, and you're not even letting me answer. Because ask I the have question. To say, and you, you're just a defensive. I, nature, I get guy. to ask the question, you're just Dan. Your defense. And and Dan, if you yeah, don't I have uh, to put it out there, Danny, for you Dan, to little Dan, it. look, look, Dan. Have Dan, you little, allowed me to put it out there? Little Dan, I'm going to ask you a question, and you haven't yet heard it. So you can't yet answer the question Danny Pooh how are what you going to geometrically measure the horizon will you geometrically measure it or optically measure the geometric horizon I was asking for you and I to come to an understanding no, no, with Dan, the audience what I that think, was see I yeah, was trying yeah. to orient the audience with what you and I already know but you want to fight about it let's just tell them about earth as you know it correct me if I'm wrong if we're a six-foot person standing on the shore, a most effective distance would be three miles, which would be roughly matching your height as to how much drop there may be. In fact, we don't see drop because drop is oh. on the other side. Half of the drop is on the other side. So, for instance, at 10 miles, 66 feet of drop doesn't appear as 60 feet because, in fact... The half of that is on the other side. So we might be looking at uh, some 32 uh, feet. Well, in fact, they use some sort of word called quadratic, whatever that means. And they chop me down to 16 feet. So no matter what, we're now playing with 16 feet of potential obstruction between two points at 10 miles. Well, hold on. You switched from drop to obstruction. They're very different. Switch from... What? You were talking drop. Then you swapped in the word obstruction. Right, so 66 this is, feet of this drop. Is, this is a bait and switch here. No, 66 feet of drop is not what we would expect to see. We'd expect to see the peak of that, half of that, at 16, at 32 feet. But yet there's still a curve between me and that. So it's called quadratic. 16 feet would all I would expect to see is, is obstruction. Then sadly enough... My observer height's almost that tall, that, that tall. So, in fact, you could shit on this entire observation if you want. Well, now, that's, that's why very we likely other distances. All right. So, so let's, let's, let's back up here a little bit. And I will, I'll give you, as much as I can, the actual globe prediction. So, what's the observer height again? Uh, just for conversation, let's call it zero. Let's call it zero. No, no, no. Let's where was? It. No, I'm not going to do it. Uh, the hypothetical. You said you actually done, have observations. Oh, we've done it many so times. Where is, if you look at that geo clip, high, if you look at the 35 second clip, all right, now, their observation is two feet off yeah, the water. Ob absolutely great, fantastic. What was your observation that you want to talk about right now? You you said you have 35. Really you have 35 if observations. If if it's unmentioned, it's you and I standing at six foot height. Okay, now, and, and you have, I did and you have research, a camera at that height in, about, in this video? It's about nine feet. I'm nine just feet. trying to tell you, right. everything I've done research nine is at feet. nine feet. And the target distance is how far? In this case, 9.6 miles. And how did you measure that? Uh, it wasn't physically measured. It was assumed. How? Every possible map we had access to. You know, it would be... It would be something that we trusted it had been measured yeah, in the could, past. Could and you we, just it wasn't be, our job be to specific. pick up the variations and Certainly. problems that Certainly. you might come up with. Because we're calling it 10 miles anyway. Dan, I'm just, just curious. How did you we're actually get the distance? Because it's okay. easier to do the math. So, sorry, sorry. Just calling it 10 isn't answering my question. How did you get that distance? Where was that distance sourced? 9.6 to the beach and 9.7 to the road okay but how did you get that i don't know man Stop you don't it. know Stop what, what I'm kind gonna, of I'm what kind of observation is this if you don't establish super, some problem super there, there trot just off if you, if you can't note it if you can't make actually a do a decent, I will accept a decent your experiment that's fine on any number do you understand that oh on any number excellent all right well tell you what i'll take the 9.6 for now but I think Dang. I know. I think so I know sweet. the answer to how you got so it. Totally now. And I, I know why you don't want to you. say. All right, now. Okay. What's and <laughs> what's the target size? God, you're embarrassing. What's you the really target? What's the target size? 
It doesn't matter. We moved on from this point because mathematically we may be seeing what we're supposed to. Do you get that? Can I move on? No, this was your, your flat earth evidence. Uh -oh. All right, so Do let's go back any? to Nat Geo's claim. In, no, uh, in their claim I didn't make a claim. I you. didn't make any claims. I'm not Nat Geo. So you are the okay. one that is here to present evidence for right. Flat Earth. So we not, went out. Not to present Nat evidence Nat for the globe. <coughs> oh, man. Nat Geo was okay. trying to present evidence for the globe. I'm not Nat Geo. I'm not making their claim. So where is no your one, actual like, evidence no for flat one Earth? Use you being that Geo, and if you cool, say it cool. again, why do you keep bringing without it up? Without fucking watching it, I'm gonna be done with you, McFool. All Just right. Just fucking watch it. Don't be responsible for it. Have an opinion. That's what you're fucking responsible for. All right. No, I just I just want to make sure that we're in agreement on the actual prediction for the globe first. Would I you mean, like in me agreement, I'll tell you. You don't tell me. Thirty-five seconds. It's been reduced to no edits. 35 seconds and every bit of it is a lie would you like me to share it would you like to watch it is this would the you nat like to know why am i rate about salt is, is this the nat geo one that you want to send me it's just is it nat geo what, it's just the location we're still trying to talk about it's all the same location i've but got it, many examples but it's nat i want geo. you to accept the distances the math and the scenario Right? But it, so when I'm but shot it's, down at this distance, right, we can move on to other stuff. The point is, if you watch the Nat Geo stuff, there is nothing accurate in it. But why do you want to talk about Nat Geo when I didn't claim it as evidence? Wow. I was actually... I mean, why are you straw manning me? I didn't claim it as evidence, so... It doesn't matter. Why don't you actually present your claims. evidence for your position? Again, I asked you not to pretend. No, I don't care. I, I don't care. I'm here. going to I once and over to have an and over and I over. I'm going to insist to that you don't. The truth. Yeah, I'm going we to insist that you actually present your evidence instead of you talking about somebody else's globe evidence who's okay. not here. So if you oh. can't do that, Dan, it's you. It's on you. It's an obvious position that you don't I have your. Do that. It's obvious I that you don't do that. have any evidence. If that's what you have to do, if you have to talk oh instead God. of actually presenting evidence, what you're doing is you're talking about somebody else's globe claim. Talk about your okay, flat Earth claim. Okay, so me and my friends go back, and here's a small clip. It's 9.77 miles. We're using a fucking uh, ready, a hydro level, and we're shooting him from both directions. It's the same distance. It's the same place. It's the same results we can see across the fucking lake. This is our experiment. This is just one. Would you like to see more or just claim I don't have them? Remember, you said I don't have this. You didn't ask if I did. You just said I didn't. Wait. And you said, gee, you don't show me someone else's stuff, but I got too much shit of ours to show you. You're not going to appreciate it. You're not going to appreciate this distance, which is 9.7 miles. You're not going to appreciate when we move to 18 plus miles. And you're not going to appreciate when we come back and we do it with infrared or when we do it with different uh, light like mirrors. You're just going to go... Uh-uh, uh-uh, you didn't do it right. That's what you're going to say, right? All right? Right. So I have plenty of examples. I'm sorry we couldn't establish now that you don't trust mapping. I didn't know that was going to be a problem. No, I, I'm just, I, you know, I just, it's always good to know, to know where you get your information from, Dan. Gosh, you know, we wouldn't actually, it, here's the crazy great? part. Wouldn't just it be like great? elevation. Just like elevations, like we read them, then we go compare it to like an app and we look to like verify stuff. Like, hey, all these say the same thing. Let's go with it. Oh, right? well, <laughs> if all of those things also said the earth was a globe, you'd go with that? That's your reasoning. No. What That's a bandwagon that fallacy there. We know better than to trust an individual source. Well, That's I mean, what I meant. Oh yeah, but they all say the same thing that the Earth is a globe. So by your by your you know the way you're going to go with it. I just explain the method that would be scientific, where things are measurable, observable, and oh. repeatable. Well, and just one... because you saw it before you got to the location, you might want to check it against available applications all right, that would verify these things while you're there. Have we shown that deviation? Yes. Does it mean anything? No. It's right. three feet off. Who gives right. a fuck? Excellent. Then why did you bring it up?
That's, I'm a little uh, because, confused. Because to, we eventually moved to the confusing. salt flats, which is generally all at one elevation all the way across. But you guys don't believe in that. Oh, you no, say it's, it's all based on the center of the earth. It's all at one no elevation. Thing, there's no such thing as a as a tangent line to you. It doesn't exist. What? Why? Right? Why? Why would I say there's no such thing as a tangent line? Of course there is. Well, because that's you, Euclid. What Euclid, uh, Book Three, Proposition Eighteen. So when we take this light and make a tangent line across many miles, uh -huh. it and, doesn't deviate. And how did from you the surface? And how did the you control the question? Deviate oh, away. Super. How did you control for confounding variables? We didn't. We have no control. You mean did we monitor? No, how did you, you mean? How did you control for confounding variables? You don't oh, know what that means. You made a great point. You mean like doing it in different temperatures, different distances, different locations with different well, that, light sources. That would be of that would be one way. Things like that. Yeah, and things then, like that. And then did, did you do the analysis for those things? Did you include yeah. a vertical temperature gradient measurement in your in your work here? No, no, no. we didn't do waypoints either. You didn't sorry. do vertical temperature measurements. And we didn't do waypoints either. Yeah. Wow. So hold on. Let me make sure that I understand. Wait, no, 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 no. I'm admitting it. You can shut the fuck up about it. Got it, it doesn't mean oh. shit. Go ahead and add standard bullshit all you want. No, it's I didn't. I don't. There. No, definitely don't. Don't add standard it's because not there. because Dan because Dan uh, because Dan I saw the video. It was done at Which night over one? water. That is not Which standard. One? There's nothing standard about that. And there's nothing standard about the location either. Because so, all right. It's so super, I just, it's I just heated, want you right? to be there's sure. There's less refraction at the Salton Sea than anywhere on Earth. Why? Why would there be less refraction there? Well, because it's under the, ge it's geothermally heated. Okay. And it's, it's below sea level. It's very Okay. Heated. So, di but did you measure the vertical temperature gradient to actually Again? substantiate your you claim? You mean since last time I told you I didn't? No, yeah, no, so you wow. didn't. So That's so your funny. claim so That's your claims funny. about least refraction. I don't is, have to is do you have control over space and time. <laughs> All right. Well here, I'll just say this. Um th this is from, you know, if you're gonna have a measurement where where you ignored refraction, then this is gonna be something. I didn't ignore that, refraction. Yeah, you I didn't did. measure refraction, a gradient. Which means immediately and adamantly claim is always present because there's temperature fluctuation and atmospheric conditions that are consistently okay. affecting what you perceive. This refraction always happens. That's why it's important. Well, if you can't adequately account for refraction, you can't make a claim about the apparent location. Now can you, Randy? That, yeah, good job there, Austin. I'm claiming that you haven't even actually accounted for all the variables and you're touting your trigonometry that literally hand waves dismiss one of the most important variables when it comes to perception, which is refraction. Refraction. All right. Well, anyway, Dan, I will I will say next time, get a vertical temperature gradient measurement. Why? You don't even care about the metabunk numbers. You don't care about the Sagitta. You don't care about shit. You don't care about the temperature. You're just like, you found a hole. Go and sit never your in your hole. dissecting of the Go observations, you even account hole. for refraction that we because know for a prove, fact to be present. There is, you can't prove there is a gradient. When you just throw refraction out entirely, invoking the furthest point away in the image and saying that you don't have to account for refraction and making the basis assertion it doesn't move it because you showed us some really not very great images where they look to be generally the same is laughable, bro. Laughable, bro. How are you going to do this observation and pretend that refraction doesn't happen? That's a little weird, Dan. Uh, wave that white flag, I guess. Okay, well, I didn't say it didn't happen. As a matter of fact, we used all the metabunk fucking refractive numbers and threw all those numbers in there for you. So I'm not sure what your fucking problem is awesome. when you claim it was ignored. It's really not fair for you to say that. But you know, you, you it's told another me. assumption. It's another assumption. Do no, you know Dan, that? you told me with your own face hole that you did not measure the vertical temperature gradient. Yes, so you found one thing missing. We didn't get the uh, wet bulb every time either, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guess what? So of all these numbers that we did get, I can show you variations. I can show you averages. I can show you where we did it everywhere from in the 20s Fahrenheit to the 100s Fahrenheit. So we're talking 80 degrees difference, uh -huh. right? And, and which and one no included the no vertical, effect, vertical, no vertical effect temperature on that gradient? Light. You yeah, the that? vertical temperature gradient is what I'm talking about, not the, just the, the the temperature. I know the actual but gradient. But when you're talking about the effect, yeah, but it's not just the gradient. See, so you're stuck now. Oh no, the gradient is what causes the refraction no. to happen. 
I'm it's not sorry, just the temperature. Man, the fraction if the temperature was if the temperature was uniform, then there would not be any refraction due to the temperature, would there? There would not. Okay. So no matter what you pretend, we are exceeding the expectation of the bending of light under any circumstance. So you have said, but not pre presented the analysis of it. And well, how could I'm you know that if you did analysis. not measure the vertical temperature gradient? How, how, how could you know if you didn't measure that? You could not know. You are completely ignorant of the vertical temperature gradient. Man, this Mandelbrot guy keeps lying, fucking everyone, telling him that I don't know the number. Really, I'm really tired of it. It's proprietary information. It hasn't what? been released. I keep leaking it. It's proprietary? What, what do you mean it's proprietary? You have all this evidence, all this research from how many years ago, and it's not released? Oh, damn. Yeah, get your stuff to get off Discord and hop to it. You got some pencil sharpening to do, man. Not in my control, fuckwad. Oh, well, go, go. Whoever it is that that is balking, I tried, fuckwad. I don't need your suggestions, fuckwad. Wow, getting a little antsy there, Danny. Would you like to see the numbers you claim I don't have, or is there a reason you really need them? Because what we've shown is that we've moved the variable, we've moved the distances, we've moved the light sources, we've moved the locations, and we continue to parallel the surface of the Earth. We can't find a deviation so you've I said but never controlled for the important confounding variable not once oh my. you said that once. you said that you've never controlled for the vertical I'm temperature i'm just gonna gradient. try one time with show you right it's just by the time wait I'm don't forward don't don't I'm reveal anything here. that's proprietary dan you don't want to get fired from the position that you right. have in this organization there is no organization. Your head is up your ass. You make assertion after assertion, and that's why I treat you this way. Tell you sir. what, Dan. Tell you what, Dan. Uh, I will do the math for you because I know it's tough for flat earthers. You send me the data. You get whoever it is that's sitting on it and you know blocking progress. Have them send it to me. I'll do the math for you. The math. Yes. No, I've, uh, I'm trying to tell you that I'm not hiding it. I just it's just not really something i need to show you right now hang on let me explain something okay i'm i'm about to well you didn't watch the last video i don't know why i this so knowing that we've done this over and over again we keep moving further and further away nobody gives a fuck i decided let's do something horizontal let's see the shit horizontally because looking down the pike looking down the barrel hasn't helped very much you know what i mean so i tried to get smart and I'm showing you here an example of what we tried to set up here was a 10 mile observation moving left to right across 10 miles as well. So by viewing this, we determined that a 10 mile span left and right would have the same thing I was talking about before. The 66 feet of drop would be left and right. So now we got to really look at it in the middle and the center point now again at 10 miles would be 16 feet. So the question is, can we pick up 16 feet of height variation from 10 miles away is the question. Wait, wait. So we, height variation moving laterally. Yeah. You mean? We went to the salt flats. We went, we went to the salt flats to get a head start on what we might consider flat ground. Okay. And, but, and you did a horizontal test using height yeah this time no laser it's incandescent light the point is it should be out it shouldn't be visible to begin with uh in this case it was over eight miles away it shouldn't be visible from the observation point at all yeah, assuming zero refraction uh, right um okay assuming standard refraction as well. okay okay but this was non-standard conditions uh do, do you know when, when, when <laughs> surveyors use standard refraction, what conditions they're talking about? I don't want to talk much it's about not, the fallacy it's of not, standard refraction. No, no, it's no. a fallacy. Uh, yeah, it, I, don't, already... I definitely don't use standard refraction. They, they, are, they do it when they don't have you know enough right. details of it. And it's not at night oh, uh, after a, a clear day at low elevation that's not that's not what they they use it for it's definitely different so this is not standard you should never use standard refraction for this the refraction would be significantly can I pick, higher 
Can I pick your brain on a future observation? Sure, sure. If I want to take this same span of 10 miles and I want to run a drone from me to you, technically, it should deviate from the Earth with if we don't allow it to read any any GPS inputs or anything uh, whatsoever. How is it going to measure its uh, position if you turn off the GPS? Let's just say you had to come home, you know, coming home to the base. So you turn it on, you run around to the other side. To you. So it's flying point to point. It's the only navigation it knows. But how, say is it, it, how is it getting dis- its position? Let's say we disable navigation. Okay, then what? Then it then it doesn't do anything so, automatically. It just does what you, you right, do on right. the joystick. So the point is, can you and I agree that we could probably figure out how to fly something between us? Without GPS? Yeah, let's say you had a joystick and we worked at it. Okay. And, and how are you going to ensure that it doesn't deviate from this tangent? Well, we have two options. We can either allow it to or just see what it does on its own. It, In other it words, can't we do anything on its own. Or we could use LIDAR. We could keep it six feet off the water. And then my question Why to you is... Why do you want to do how, everything what? so close to the water? That's the worst well, place my to do question, it. Well, first of all, it's something to compare to. And secondly, what my question to you is, what do you think I could use as a measurement tool? Because I'm having trouble measuring water, so this might allow me to measure if I hug the water. I would suggest... I can, going to the salt flats and measuring reciprocal zenith angles. I don't know what you mean by that, but we've been there. So I, I, what do you, what do you mean to me measuring reciprocal zenith angles? So, so all this time and you don't, uh, I mean, how long have you been doing flat earth stuff and you don't know what reciprocal zenith angles are? Well, the simplicity of putting two drones in the air and seeing if they deviate from each other, you know, we but, haven't done that but you, either. But you As haven't. Fact, the, idea, the idea of doing ship-to-ship radar, we haven't done either. As a matter of fact, you know, I don't have any resources or a group to pull to get that done. But Dan, either. it's not that expensive to, to rent or just to hire a, a surveyor to go do some reciprocal zenith angles. I'll, I'll, I'll have to learn what they are for your benefit, then go hire someone but, to do but, it for but you. Dan, but Dan, seriously. I watched a video See, from Living Water. Hold on. Salt Listen up, Dan. Are you not interested in that? Yeah, Dan, hold on. I watched a video from Living Waters. So, I'll, and you were in that yeah. video. How long ago was that? I sure the fuck was. Thank you. How long ago was that? That was two summers ago, and the producer was kind enough to say to Danny Faulkner, he said, look, if you're going to talk about it, why not bring some around? And um, that was pretty cool of the producer to yeah all right so that was Danny, two, two years ago Faulkner didn't talk to me boy did he pick that that kid apart boy did the editing pick that kid apart oh did danny danny's pretty good he knows his stuff he when wouldn't talk to, to me to astronomy and he wouldn't talk to me uh, okay so just yeah. just saying sky dog I mean, I'm sky dog 59 is organized that for him guy dog 59 is saying dan's lying reciprocal zenith angles have been discussed with him on gem panda's discord server many many times dan what is a very mean? dishonest person what is it maybe i don't know it by uh, that term i asked you what does it mean so when uh, so reciprocal zenith angles you take two uh two devices uh you typically a target and a theodolite uh at some distance away from each other and you measure the uh, the zenith angle from one to the target of the other, and then you swap the the target and the theodolite, and you measure from the other direction. So regardless of elevation, but on the salt flats, it's uh, pretty convenient because the elevation is the same. Regardless of elevation, if the Earth is flat, they sum to 180, and if the Earth is spherical, then they sum to more than 180. Regardless of elevation, if the Earth... Mike, hot Mike, Mike. Yeah, so this is no different than that uh, spherical access story. Nope, spherical access is horizontal. This is vertical. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of things flat earthers haven't gotten done. I unfortunately I can only show you what I 
we have gotten done. It's hard well, to well, show you what we Well, conveniently, conveniently, Baron Rutledge, a surveyor, just did that at the Salt Flats. And there I just put a, a link in there to, to where he did it. Um, he then, you're going to love this, he sent me his, his notebook. So hold on. I'll, I'll drop it in here for you. Hang there's, on, hang on. A you know, that is convenient. I like the word you use there, convenient. That is nice, yep. You'd have there to you be go. completely disregarding everything we've done, which you are. Everything you've show done? You I can well, show you I lots of work at the top Yeah, 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 I'm ignoring yeah. everything that you've done, exactly. Well, the, saying, the problem you know, is, see, the like problem is, Dan. Worked at Salt Flat. The, the problem I is, Dan. Video. Yeah, we've Dan, got a, a, Dan, a release, a docuseries that deeply shows with good footage the stuff that is been released, yeah, he, the stuff yeah, that has yeah. been released. Yeah, We're yeah. under no illusions that they actually take a genuine look or have a genuine response to anything that we show them. Yeah. Sensei, one and one here, buddy. You can you can queue up next. I'm just listening, sir. No, you you, you don't listen with your mouth flapping. You, you listen with your ears. I mean, I'll flap it too. It's kind of whatever I want to do. There we go. All right. Uh, Problem by solved. The, by the way, uh, um, sonar, sonar Curves did a real good job on all right, no, you didn't. Well, all I right, wish, so so I put I in I put in these reciprocal all their emotions hold as on. well as he did. Hold on, I wish I could control my right. emotions shush, as well shush, as he did. Shush, Danny. I put in I put in the uh, notebook, the field notes from. No Baron. one gives a fuck. I'm showing right. you. I'm trying to show you what we've done. I don't care what Globers have done to defend themselves. So, so You're here's the here's posture. the problem. Here's the problem, Dan, and all all flat earthers for some reason want to invent some different way that that people uh, haven't done before to measure the shape of the earth to try to measure the shape of the earth but always being careful to make sure that it only will result in flatness that you want to use drones but how are you but you're going to turn off gps then what how are you going to make sure that they don't uh that they don't deviate from the tangent you don't know you can't answer Guess that what? question. I was doing your job of measuring water. All I want you to do is measure water. Nobody would do it. That was my idea to measure water. Sorry. Well, water's been measured if that's what you want, and I could cite that Show as me. well. Bring it up. Boom. Uh, you're not gonna like it. You're just gonna. You're gonna. You're gonna. You're gonna. Well, hand here's wave what it I know. Just they're second. telling me an Olympic-sized pool. It's not big enough. They're telling me that the david taylor basin's big enough it's 2200 feet long there's a half inch i should expect to see of of height variation somebody says oh look at the beam look at the beam above fuck that just show me a laser shooting across it show me the why, variation why does it have it, to be a boom, laser banging right into the water the boom nice, laser boom the, right the nice in the fucking thing water. yeah the night the, and that's yeah, always with the lasers the nice thing about a, a theodolite is that it doesn't suffer from the the coning that a laser it, does. Coning does not yeah. divert yeah. a diverging beam yeah. does not mean it's not hitting you. It just means it's shooting outward. It, yeah, outward. and it it's increases. Diverging. That it doesn't increases mean you don't have a direct line to the beam. Don't pretend otherwise. Everyone knows it's a direct line still. Just right. because it's diverging no. means nothing. So you said it's nothing. direct, but you didn't account nothing. for refraction. You never account for refraction. All right. We did Here account for refraction. Well, you told me that you did. You're fucking still saying that. You told me you didn't. Because it's convenient for you to say that. All right. What was the I vertical told temperature you we gradient? Used everything out of the metabunk what? table, Super. right? What was the vertical metabunk. temperature gradient? We what was the vertical? Okay, so you did. Okay, got it. I told you. Got it. All right. So that. I put in there. I put in there for you the measurement of water right there. That one. Just look at that link there. That is Jesse Kozlowski. Bob's house. Fuck another, that. another. That's not Bob. That's Jesse Kozlowski. That's uh, that's out on the East Coast there. Uh, Bob. Bob lives in Michigan. Just for reference. Now you can you can scroll through that and you can analyze his uh, his field notes. You can I've look seen, at his methodology. I've seen plenty of Jesse's work. I've All seen right. Plenty of Super. So so you said you wanted measurements over water. So this is exactly what Jesse did. He no, measured. I wanted over measurements water. of water. Yes, Thank exactly. You. Yeah, how Thank are you, you gonna how are you gonna measure of water optically? You can't. I'm just asking you, you can't. to prove the eight how? inch drop, dude. Sir, oh, just op absolutely. It. That's exactly what this does. So let me let me give you this. So right here, here is the final page of that that whole sheet there. 
Right? You got that? You see that? You pull it up there. No. I see him struggling and you struggling to prove your point. I'm sorry. You asked me very specifically. And I'm I'm used to flat earthers asking me for something specific. And then I give them exactly that and they refuse to look. I'm used to it. It's embarrassing for you and it shows your bias. But I do enjoy doing it publicly to thoroughly humiliate and you and show how scared you are of evidence. Anyway, so up on my screen, you on, never, up ever on my screen on YouTube, I am showing the evidence that Dan the Waterman refuses to look at because you it will continue to make it, assertions. It absolutely and false assertions demolishes his flatter flying over. pizza. So and Dan, over again. So Dan, I've listen up, Dan. You before. Listen up, this Dan. Is your usual, Dan. Dan, usual, shush. Shush, Dan. I'm not watching hey, Dan. your citation routine. Of course you're I not. Did. I know you're not because it hurts you. It hurts your precious Did you flat make a comment pizza. on 35 so, seconds of so, Nat Geo? So no, Dan, you claimed to so not be Nat Geo. So Dan, Did you make a comment yeah, Dan, on the 9.7 mile observation? You asked, that Dan, you said let's back up here. Do One minute ago. We did do it ourselves. One minute ago, did Dan. Dan, we used, hey Danny. Uh, we used the hydro level. Danny, we used the tape measure. Hey Danny, yeah, Danny, you, you, you are so obviously, yeah. then I obviously you trying miles, to avoid the evidence that is up on, on the screen right now. You it's know? on the screen on YouTube. Hundreds of and people look. are looking at you right now, refusing and to look at evidence because it hurts and you so much. Dude, so Dan, I just so Dan, let me let me review you. You once made more. Zero once on more, Dan. We did. Once and more, Dan. Let me we're, we're up to about two, about you two minutes ago. About you got about three seconds. Got it, Dan. To finish about your two seconds. Incident. About two and minutes I am ago, Dan. Leaving your okay, horrible. Run away, run away, Dan. If you have company. to. Three seconds is up, Dan. Three. All right. So two. you are scared to look bye, at evidence bye, because liar. it hurts you, Dan. When you watch that. It shit, look, get back. To oh me. my! Your time's up, Dan. Stop being a child. All right, so I will review the evidence that Dan specifically asked for and refused to look at. At the very bottom of Jesse's page, he has he has the overview, including the uh, the delta arc. The miles is 0.48 miles, so he's just under half a mile away. And the curve drop from a horizontal plane at the stand at the standpoint is 0 0.15 feet. Now that's that's uh, feet in decimals, not feet in inches. It's a little unusual, but that's what surveyors in the United States do. That when you work out 0 0.48 miles, and you do the uh, the good old eight inches per mile squared, you will find that the the uh, uh, 0.15 feet matches that dead on. So when Dan asked, I want you to show me the uh, eight inches per mile squared drop. That is exactly what it is right there. All right. Thanks, Dan. Love it. I love it when flat earthers well, refuse to look at evidence. Thank you. I just didn't want to go on forever. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Bye, Dan. Bye, Felicia. All right. Now, let's see. Sensei. Sensei. Oh, he left. All right. Sensei, if you wanted to come in, it's too late, though. I mean, you left. So, Dan did not fare well. Woo. No one commented on your video. The reason why I didn't comment on your National Geographic video is because I'm not in National Geographic. If you have evidence, support, present your evidence. But since you did not have any vertical temperature gradient measurements, and it's critically important, not just according to me, Dan, it's according to Witsit. I mean, Witsit, your guy. He's your guy, Dan. He says, says this. Refraction increases proportionate to the distance. You know? So, if, I mean, Witsit would not be pleased with you, Dan. Anyway, does anybody else around here have any anything? Um, again, once again, I'll remind you, $10,000 is sitting out there for the first flat earther that can do celestial navigation. Can any flat earther do celestial navigation? I mean, I can. You give me three star angle measurements taken with a sextant. I will use the globe. I will use the Haversign formula. I will use the radius of the earth and I will tell you the position of the observer. But flat earthers given that same that same data can do nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Anyway, oh uh, yeah. And so we have sonar curves says, yeah, sonar does curve. Sonar curve says as a result, elevation of the, the, the in the data are referenced to the geoid. Yes. 
The surface is not readily found using satellite geodesy. The latter observational method is more suitable for global mapping. Therefore, motivation and a substantial problem with the WGS and similar work is to patch together data that were not only made separately for different regions, but to re-reference the elevations to an ellipsoid model rather than to the geoid. Yeah, and, and the surveying is, is a long-standing field, and they have many different reference ellipsoids. Um, you have the Bessel ellipsoid, the Clark ellipsoid. Once you get into the United States, more recent things, you've got the um, Great Lakes uh, reference um, vertical datum, which turned into NAVD88, I believe, is what it is. Um, <clears throat> and all of these are slightly different, and they all need to be merged together, and surveyors are trained in how to uh, uh, convert between these different coordinate systems, um, including then the different uh, systems that each state has. Each state has a different um, multiple different maps, except for the out east, they only have sometimes one map. The reason why they have multiple maps is because the Earth is spherical. You can't have one uh, flat map for the entire United States. If you could, if the Earth were flat, you certainly would. There'd be just one map. But but because every state has a different uh, mapping system, and they have to have some sort of a mapping between them, and there's a process for that that surveyors will do. Um, it tells us that the Earth is spherical. Now, I have seen some flat Earth surveyors, some claimed flat Earth surveyors, um, talking about uh, that they claiming that they don't include refraction or sorry, uh, the radius of the Earth in their in their work. But of course, they typically don't even know why they are doing what they do when they're doing their surveying. So anyway. <laughs> I don't know why sonar curves is giving me the uh, the violin, but um, you go ahead. Oh, Dan, Dan says this is gross. <laughs> yeah, glo globe turd society. We're making our lives really hard on ourselves surveying the way we do if we're on a flat plane. Yeah, the, the field of surveying would be so much different if it actually were flat. Um, uh, so to, to surveyors, the, the, the claimed flat earth surveyors, like you got Rayism 24B, he, uh, he never did very deep surveying. He typically was in, I think to my knowledge, he was only in his one county. He never had to go between different maps. He never had to do any translations between maps. And all he was doing was uh, location and uh, elevation mapping. And when you do elevation mapping, there are techniques that you specifically use to deal with the radius of the earth. What are those techniques? Well, when you make sure that you have four sites and back sites that are the same length, that is one of the ways that is doing that. So, all right, I heard somebody, um, I don't know. I mean, I can, I can talk about why the earth is a sphere and uh, all day long if, if you want to hear, so. No, that's all right. I was just wondering, can you elaborate a little more on your gravity challenge? Sure. Um, uh, uh, all over the Earth, at the surface of the Earth, the uh, downward acceleration is about 9.8 meters per second squared, but it varies. It varies from about 9.7 to just under, just over 9.8. Um, it's, it's in the second and third digits is where you really see it. So my gravity challenge is to not just predict the downward acceleration, the magnitude of it. Now, I'm not saying predict gravity. I'm saying the acceleration uh, and its variation. Now, I give in my challenge the method that I use, which is a, a bit of a simplified version of it, but I do it on purpose using, using just, you know, maybe 10th grade math um, to do it. I did not. So some people looked at that uh, the way I did it and they're like, hey, you could have used, you know, these, this trigonometry to be more precise. I'm like, I know. Anyway, um, I, I have a method that predicts to to better than one tenth of one percent the value of uh, gravity at uh, any location on the Earth. And so the challenge is for a flat Earther to do the same thing, to have a method that predicts the downward acceleration. All you need to do is do it better than gravity better than the method that I do, which is based on gravity. 
Um, and uh, this is the, the, the standardization network is the IGSN 71 standardization network. This is a 51, 52 year old standard and, and uh, different measurements all over the world have been done using that thousands and thousands of them. I think I got 40 or 50,000 just for the state of Minnesota that I imported into a database. Um, so the, the flat earther or the, the globe, uh, globe denier or the gravity denier, anybody actually who rejects gravity could potentially participate, ne um, just needs to provide the method for different locations and elevations for what the value is. And you choose whatever five IGSN 71, uh, gravity stations, they call them gravity stations, but it's downward acceleration stations. You choose whatever five you want. I choose whatever five you want after you send that in. And uh, so we have 10 gravity station uh, measurements. Whoever gets closest wins. If, if I win, no money is exchanged. If you win, money is exchanged. The money is already in escrow. It's being held by uh, Brainy Beaver, or he goes by Beaver Zero now in Bitcoin. He lives in Canada. I have a contract with him where re he is released from liability if I'm angry with him and I don't agree with him. Uh, the challenge also has, if you disagree with, with uh, for some reason, if you think that my my uh, my initial um, evaluation is wrong, then we a, uh, a panel of judges is put together um, and they make the final decision. And again, the contract I have with Brainy Beaver says that's uh, that whatever they say is what goes and I can't hold them accountable for it. So there. So, big two. Your, your initial evaluation says that objects are accelerating downwards towards Earth. Yes. Correct. Things are accelerating downward. And, and and what is and what is the mechanism? The mechanism that I use in my in my challenge is a two part. Uh, first is the, uh, the the law of gravitation, which is F equals G1, uh, uh, G times M1 times M2 over R squared. It's an application of that. Um, and then we, we want to get the, the uh, gravity field. So, so we wind up getting A, the, just the acceleration, equals G times M1, the mass of the Earth, over R squared. And so R squared, R is the distance from the uh, point to the center of the Earth. So we use the elevation data and WGS84 to get the elevation. Then second, we apply centrifugal force. And uh, this is where the trigonometry could have come in, but I chose not to. It, it makes my prediction method a little less accurate, a little, little opening for the flat earthers, should they have some uh, more accurate way to predict it. Uh, so then we, anyway, I just do a basic subtracting of the centrifugal acceleration at that point. Hey, McToon. Okay. Um, could you tell me or explain to me why it would be such a great difference if a land surveyor was working on a flat plane rather than a globe? Okay. I, l let me, I just want to give JC23 a chance before I move to that, though, if you don't mind. Don't yes, okay. absolutely. JC, was no, that? Go for it. I, I, I was just curious on some of the specifics. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, so the difference, the difference would be... Uh, when you do long range surveys, any errors that you have early on get get magnified as you go farther uh, away from your your starting point. Um, if you had no way of incorporating the the uh, the globe in the the process, then you would not have any way to rectify between uh, coordinate systems. So let's say you're in Minnesota and you're doing some work on the west side of Minnesota near South Dakota. South Dakota and Minnesota have different um, coordinate systems. And in order to um, translate between them so that you can have, you know, if you're going to build a road, you want to have the road at the same elevation in Minnesota as in South Dakota and at the same location in Minnesota as in South Dakota. So a surveyor who, uh, who knows the process for doing this has to be involved so that both sides can get their uh, the road at the same elevation and same location. Well, why would you want this the road to be at the same elevation from thousands of miles away? Well, when you're when you're at the border between Minnesota and South Dakota, you definitely want the board the road to be at the same elevation. Otherwise, you know, drivers don't like 
roads that have a two, three foot drop in them or whatever. You know? Oh, what's the max distance of a land surveyor for a roadway? I, how could that question be asked, answered? What, what size roadway, an interstate? No, uh, what is interstate, the you know, interstate distance. 35, interstate 35 starts, starts at Duluth, goes all the way down almost to the, to the coast of, uh, Texas there. So yeah, you, you could not do that entire distance without a, without taking the globe into account. Yeah. But you're not surveying from point A to point B from coast to coast. You are not surveying that specific line. Yeah. All right, so so let's say on this, go back to 35, Interstate 35 exits Minnesota and goes into Iowa. So the, uh, the, the, the Department of Transportation for Minnesota and the Department of Transportation for Iowa say, hey, we're going to connect these two roads together. Let's do it at 93 degrees uh, uh, west longitude and uh, wherever the border is between Minnesota and Iowa, it's not a clear clear uh, latitude and let's have it be at an elevation of i don't know 931.4 feet so now now here you are in minnesota and you're you're a, a mile away from from where the iowa border is and you want to make sure as you're building the road that you plan the road so that it's at the, the correct elevation so that when the people from iowa do it and the people from Minnesota do it, you're at the same elevation, but they use different coordinate systems. The only way to, to rectify these two coordinate systems is through using uh, the, the radius of the Earth and specific globe-based mechanisms. Does that answer your question? No. No? No, because measuring east to west and measuring um, that does not um, answer the question as to how they're surveying the roadways or, you know, whatever they want to survey. Uh huh. Well, so so that's just projecting because there's many times where they've been wrong when they've built a bridge and their survey was off to where they built the bridge on both sides and they were supposed to meet up perfectly in the middle and they never did. Yeah. So people, so was people there make path out or was yeah, people the, make mistakes. Or people do make mistakes. Earth go a, li a little bit more round that at that point in time. Yeah. Pe people do make mistakes. So, uh, the, like I said, the, the coordinate systems aren't the same between States. They, they differ, especially on the edges. And of course that's where you're meeting. Right in the center, typically, if you have a, a a map, I think Minnesota has, you know, I don't remember how many. I shouldn't, I couldn't guess. Um, several different um, maps that go across Minnesota, and uh, typically the the correctest portion of it is going to be towards the center of the map, and the least correct portion is going to be towards the extremes of that map, which is where your roads are going to intersect. So I, I don't know how how to explain it any better. These two coordinate systems do not have the same numbers, right? Iowa says 93 degrees uh, west longitude and Minnesota says 93 degrees west longitude, and they're not the same. They're in a different actual position, and you need a, you need a surveyor to say, okay, well, theirs is going to be this many you know feet laterally different than ours is, so we need to meet up somewhere. Uh, you know, have a have a solution for that. So, uh, I, I don't know. I hope I hope that that uh, answers your question. I don't know. Um, anything, Don? No. Okay. No, I, I'm sorry. I'm still trying to figure out what you just said. Okay. Um, I don't know. It, it, people people watching, uh, uh, there's there's 580 on YouTube. D did you understand uh, what I was saying? So I don't maybe I didn't explain it well. So, and, well, and I understand the fact that normally, and sometimes they build 
roadways or bridgeways um, from point A to B to C or A to B, and sometimes they built it A, B to C, right? Um, but they normally built it from A to B rather than from A, B to C. If you understand that terminology. I don't know how that makes any difference in this. But uh, the I'm well, getting yeah, I'm getting all because hold on. I'm getting mostly yeses from the five hundred and eighty people watching on YouTube. So um thank you for that. Maybe, maybe it's uh maybe it's not me, maybe it's not the explanation. Well, yes, it does, because you're trying to explain that they built a roadway from one point to an uh, and from another point and then they meet up in in the middle and that's not how roadways are normally built surveyors are not involved in building roads oh no surveyors are involved so, in sur building surveyors roads, are involved in, surveyors... in and what and what specifically do surveyors do when building a road uh, survey the land that's in front of them okay but but what is the output of what a surveyor is doing in this process how does that help the you know the the construction crew well making sure the roadway is exactly the way they want it at that point in the helping them get the correct in the blueprint helping them get the correct position the right right position and elevation right yeah right okay so so, and you do that, that's then in order to do that, you need to say, well, here's the coordinates I want them at. Well, what coordinate system is going to be used in that? And in different coordinate systems, they don't overlap perfectly. Well, what's right? um, major uh, road? Like you sat there and said the I-35. The I-35, I yep. And it goes from coast to coast, right? It, it goes from, starts from Duluth, Minnesota. No, it's north south road. So it's an odd number. Oh, yeah, it's an odd numbered road. It goes north south. So it starts in Duluth and goes goes almost all the way to this the coast of Texas. Okay, so you said that they built that road um knowing point A to point B and started building at point A and point B and then finishing at point C. So they they don't build roads like that. They might build a couple bridges like that, but they've never built a road like that. You think that they just they just randomly go, they're like, hey, this looks like a good place to go into Iowa. I hope that the people that own the land ha are know, know about it. No, Iowa and Minnesota get together and say, look, this is the place that we're going to do it. The Minnesota people say, well, hold on a second. 93 degrees west longitude is this for us. And white 93 degrees west longitude is this for you. And they're off by a certain amount. How do we yeah, rectify it's, that? It's even, it's even better than that. It's like uh, because they hire local companies from uh, from the area. So it's uh, a lot of different places can start ground at once and start in two different directions. The guys yeah. in the middle can start <laughs> east and west. And so can, uh, you know, and, and, until they meet in, into the next state or wherever the contractor has limited, his, you yeah. know, um, his contract or something, whatever. Uh, uh, a major on. piece of one company doesn't go from California all the way, to, you know, to New York. It's many different companies, and they and they all can start at different times because they all know the plot. It's already plotted out. But there's a main there's an issue there. There's like, but they don't always know exactly all of the altitudes and stuff that they're going to have to to adjust for. So what they have is a is a like a standard uh, template uh, that you know there's an allowance for this much of a gradient. Uh, for this many for this period of time and stuff like that but there's no uh, you know it's not an exact science they can just meet up yeah but a major takes, piece of highway time. like like an interstate every single foot along the entire length is master planned for years where you are going around geologic features political features build you know city features and every grade and every elevation and then, yeah, there'd be reams and reams and reams of, of engineering drawings, generally in the individual state plane grid system, all master planned out for long, it takes years. And then there'll be revisions. And then, yeah, nothing is left to chance. And when you get down into the minutia of actually constructing it, 
You may end up with some additional revisions for, for grade considerations and the specifications for slope and grade and radius and clearance. It's just, it's enormously complex task. So A to B to C doesn't really describe it because it's more like, exactly. you know, from one to 0.50,002. Now, th thank you for that, uh, Shoebill. That, but not uh, linearly. Sh sh hold on. Sh sh Shoebill, Shoebill is a surveyor, so he's speaking from a, uh, experience. But I, for the next um, 40 minutes, if I can, I just will we'll stay one on one here. Um, but uh, then I'll then I'll back out, Shoebill. Lo love your love your stuff. Love your input. Um, and and anything I got wrong, uh, correct me. But I hope I'm hoping I'm doing well. Um, all right. Well, I, I think, I think, uh, Don Pettit, I think that probably that was enough of an explanation for now. Maybe you want to talk about it later and get, you know, go look up some of the, the, you know, how they interface between different, uh, coordinate systems. So. Hmm. The downward bias causes the electrostatics to triangle downward. Then the CIA who built the pendulum clock turns the magnets to make it spin. Love that pareidolia. <laughs> oh, oh, this is a good one. Yeah, there, there is, there is an error uh, posted by uh, trouble about the two halves don't meet in the right spot. That would be disaster on a bridge. Yeah, and that, and that right there is, is uh, tells us that the different. Uh, uh, coordinate systems are something that you need to really be careful about if the earth were flat you'd just have one it'd be it'd be much easier you wouldn't have every state and different municipality having different uh coordinate systems never we did. don't believe that no, the earth is a sphere because of the no. way they build bridges <laughs> was that jim panda who who Somebody Jim played a clip. To the rescue. Ha was that you? Hammer? You played that, didn't you? On a curve. And we accept the fact that you know that we're not building on a curve, okay? <laughs> Come on, Hammer. And that's just proof that your math is wrong. <laughs> but, and then you sit there and say it's human error. Um, A billion dollar human error? No, that's yes, not Yes, that error. happens. It happens. Your math is wrong. Well, show the right math. Show the actual one coordinate system that works for the entire Earth. Sorry, I would have to look at the um, 20 en engineers that were involved in that error. Got it. You can't do it. Because I guarantee you it was not one engineer's, er one engineer's error. There had to be at least 20 engineers involved in that. And that's like high-level engineers. So? And, and w what does that mean? That means that... That I mean, this this shows that they had an issue and they made an error in combining the different coordinate systems. It most likely is what they did, right? And maybe it was something else, but uh, this looks this looks to me like it certainly was some sort of a an error. Now I don't know I don't know where this is from. Is this real? Is this legitimate? Is this uh, I don't know, but uh, I, I can't speak to the accuracy of that particular photograph. So, all right, well. Well, I've seen them. Like, this was just proof of what I was stating, that, I, uh, that I've actually seen these errors in newspapers and news uh, articles and stuff the, like that. Hold on. But Don, you Don, want let, to, me, let me just but say. You for, want to deny it all, right? Oh, I was hold like, on. well, I can't. Hold on, Dan. Or not Dan. Don. Uh, just so you know, several people are saying that that was, that was a faked picture, so. Uh, but you're right that that certainly errors do happen, and and some people have mentioned that uh, Jefferson grids, um, uh, is that right? Jefferson grids. Anyway, different different counties and uh, small areas when they build smaller roads will come up to to uh, they do things at certain intervals, and uh, because the intervals are different between different latitudes, they have to have these corrections. So sometimes you'll be going on, and I, I mean, if you've ever driven in rural. Uh, Midwest, you, you're going on a on a road, and then it takes a hard left at 90 degrees for you know a quarter of a mile, and then it turns hard right again. 
Like, what, what was that for? Well, that was a correction because of the... the um... And there's a lot of corrections. Yeah. So the math is wrong. So engineers are wrong a lot of the time. There's a lot of hard corrections. So when I'm driving down the highway, I take this hard bend and it's like, oh, wow, they, they must have thought there was a mountain here. No, that that's not an error. That that and David Brock, who's error. also a surveyor, says it's every oh, twenty four no, miles. Yeah, that's yeah. an en engineer's way to um keep the driver awake, right? No, that's not what that's not what's for. Well, those hard bends on on highways or interstates, um in in the U.S. It's interstates where I'm from. It's highways. Uh, those hard bends. Those. Those excuses. Wait, are, are you so are you Canadian? Away, great. Hold on a second. Of course I am. Are of course you I am. Ah, oh. take off, eh, you hoser? Take off, eh? What, what are you talking about? All right. Um. All right. Well, anyway, uh, go go look up state plane systems and the the coordinate transforms between them, and then uh, we can talk about it a different time. Or, or uh, I mean, maybe you want to talk to to Shoebill about it. He, you know, he he has a bit more depth than I do on that topic. So, right, all right, I'm doing my Rubik's cube here. Uh, anything else? Any any other? I mean, so far we haven't really had a, it's been it's been kind of a dearth of uh, flat Earth evidence. If you mind the pun. And I mean, it just goes to what Demon Stride said. Like, there's no, there's no flat earther that is bold enough to say, "Here is the the evidence that I support." Right? It's this new trend of, "Well, I'm just a globe skeptic." Like, hold on a second. We know when you say globe skeptic, what you mean, what you actually believe. We know that you're not fooling anybody. Okay, we, then tell me what I believe, because. Are you, a, told you, are, you a, are you? Are you a globe know, skeptic? You know I'm a globe skeptic. Yeah. Well, here's what here's what we all know. But I'm not a flat earther. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure, not sure. a flat earther. I yeah. do. I do lean towards the. I'm starting to lean towards the hollow, or maybe even looking at the concave. Don, if I remember right, you told me. Correct me if I'm wrong. That you went to the Bible, and the Bible was where you got the information that about the shape of the Earth. Is that right? Am I remembering that right? Uh, no, because I'm not religious whatsoever. Okay, well, so I you? well I do read the Bible, like I've been baptized in like five different religions and all that stuff. Okay, but no, I I don't right. believe in the Bible's four corners and stuff like that. No. All right. Well, it was somebody else then. So um. So what what do you believe? Okay, so maybe you no longer are a flat earther and you are leaning towards hollow earth. I don't know why you would lean towards that because hollow earth is still a globe and this just got yeah. a hole in the middle and dinosaur yeah, and, and Godzilla lives in there. I don't know why why that or, would be a thing. Or some 200 feet giants, yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> just you know what any I mean. anything anything other than what makes sense and has evidence, I suppose. <laughs> now, Emerson Biggins is saying, and I don't know if this is the case, Lake Wobegon, Minnesota was omitted from maps due to surveying errors. I, I That's news to me. Um, and Brenda mentioned that, um, Brenda mentioned that uh, some people don't know where Duluth is in Minnesota. So if you look at Minnesota, the uh, Lake Superior kind of looks like the, the, the head of a wolf. Right at the nose of the wolf is right where Lake Superior pokes into this wedge. And right at the tip there is uh, where Duluth is. Duluth is a major shipping town. It's the farthest west you can go on the Great Lakes chain. So we get, uh, we would, Minnesota shipped out a lot of taconite, you know, iron from Minnesota to the rest of the world through, through the Great Lakes. And uh, a lot of shipping is brought in through the Great Lakes there. So there you go. Thanks, Brenda. I I I, I realized not everybody knows where Duluth is. So thanks. I didn't know the Great Lakes circumnavigated the world. They don't. The Great Lakes, the 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 farther 
the the westernmost portion of the Great Lakes is is Duluth, Minnesota. So that's as far as it goes west. And you got to go east, and it goes out to uh, to the Atlantic and the Saint Lawrence River, between between uh, United States and Canada, eh? Don't forget well, Superior, Wisconsin. Saint Lawrence would be uh, Quebec. I do definitely forget um, Superior, Wisconsin. Yeah, Superior, Wisconsin is the other town that's next to Duluth. But yeah, we yeah we don't, right across the river. Yeah, we don't talk about it. gross. No, actually, uh, what's the name of the river that goes into, I forgot. We camped right on the river a couple years ago. Um, jog, now I'm forgetting the name of the river. But, well, hold on a second. St. Saint, Saint Saint Louis, Louis River. Is it? Yeah. It is the St. Louis River. But it's not in St. Louis. Um. There's is there another one? There's something about Fond Fond du Lac. It was the Fond du Lac. Oh yeah, all right. Fond du Lac was the the town. Fond du Lac. Anyway, all right. Uh, uh, Professor Parks PhD says Lake Wobegon, where the women are strong, the men are good looking, and all the children are above average. So, all right. Well, um, all right. It, it, it's other than you, Don Pettit, um, other than you, when people say I'm a globe skeptic, we know what you mean. We know that that you you hug your your Gleason map pillow to sleep at night, that you've got your Gleason map on the wall behind you, but you, you took it down when, when you're like, oh, darn it, that map doesn't work. Um, Actually, no. I've never been, well... I've debated it, but no. Uh, uh, flat Earther, not really. Like I'm looking more concave. I did like the the one thing that they did with the concave a couple years ago. What? Where where there's more land on the south. What? That's that's beyond the South Pole. How does that work in a concave? You're trapped inside of a jail cell in yeah. a concave. How can there be more land inside this? I don't this, know. I watched the documentary yeah. on it, and they said there was more land beyond the South Pole. Oh, my gosh. Professor Phil Bell says, of course, there's a dearth of flat Earth evidence. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a dearth of stupid people who deny science in the hope that it will make them feel special. <laughs> um, well, let me let me say this, because I did have that gravity challenge. Um uh, if you've seen the the incredibly wrong level three documentary where Witsit tries to make these claims about how electrostatics is at play, he debunks that himself in the video. He he goes over the uh, documentation by Feynman or the writings by Feynman where where he does identify or say that there is a 100 volt per meter about 100 volt per meter vertical uh, gradient of uh, electricity in an electrostatic field that goes up a certain certain distance. It doesn't go up that far. Maybe I think it's 50 kilometers. Um, and Witsit says that that is the cause of the downward vector without realizing that a uh, an object that is negatively charged in that particular electrostatic field would be accelerated down proportional to the charge and anything with even the slightest positive charge would be accelerated upward. The slightest charge would cause it to accelerate up. And of course, things with neutral charge would not be accelerated at all. Um, then the way that he debunked that is he got these two plates. Uh, they're about 20 centimeters apart, I'm estimating. And he hooked up a Van de Graaff generator. And in the video, I think he said he had 150 volts in that Van de Graaff generator. And he put that between the two plates. And uh, he wasn't clear, but I do think that he had the negative part. I think that's what he would probably be doing. Put the negative charge on the top and the positive at the bottom for that Van de Graaff generator. That would be the opposite of the, the Earth's um, 100 volt per meter field. Um, 
but it took 150 volts and all that he got to do was put up bring up a uh, what did he bring like a little piece of styrofoam or something just a very small thing so if there was an electrostatic field causing things to go down over the course of 20 centimeters he would not need 150,000 volts he would need 21 volts that's all he would need to reverse the field 21 volts because it's 20 20 centimeters that's about one volt per centimeter um it didn't work he falsified his own claim in that incredibly silly video um he doesn't understand electrostatic fields he doesn't understand this simple simple thing that uh, i mean it's an application of coulomb's law opposites attract so if you have a negatively charged thing and it's got a positive charge in that field at a higher elevation it, it would go up anything with any slight negative charge would accelerate up at all so um anything guys uh well, phd which, tony well, says well, well go ahead i don't want to interrupt i was going to say well wouldn't that um prove anti-gravity what you just said you could test anything it. with negative gravity would go, or negative charge would go up right yeah according to witset anything with a negative charge must accelerate up But it doesn't. Well, then we would have um, anti-gravity, but yeah, we don't it, have anti-gravity. It'd be super easy to do. Therefore, Witsit's claim is falsified. Because it would be oh, really... I, I mean, you wouldn't have to have a crane to lift up heavy things. you just put a, a slight negative charge on it. Just have a wire going to a battery with a negative charge on it. It'd go all the way up. You could, you could put the battery on there. Um... Just, you know, rub it, rub it with, a, I don't know, a, either a cat or silk. And, and it would have then a negative charge. I, I forget which one is negative. And things would just accelerate upwards then. It'd be super easy to build a super tall building because you just need to have the entire building neutrally charged, you know, connected to ground. The whole thing would have zero charge, therefore zero downward acceleration. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, but how much of a negative charge would it take to lift a certain weight, right? He says it's the cause of the vector. He does not say that the electrostatic field, because it's a very weak electrostatic field, he does not say that is the magnitude. He doesn't have an explanation for the magnitude. He just says it's the cause of the direction. So even the slightest negative charge on an object would cause it to accelerate towards the positive part of an electrostatic field. It must go up according to Witsit. But it doesn't. You can test that. It's not hard. I, I don't even think you need to test it. It's just common sense. Yes. So it, it, it doesn't it doesn't work. Witsit's claim is falsified. Um but I mean uh, it doesn't it doesn't help. Uh flat earth's claims about gravity or the replacement for gravity why do things accelerate down at 9.8 meters per second squared why does it vary all over the earth so. <laughs> quantum degreaser says how can one go about getting a negative charge on a credit card asking for a friend uh <laughs> rub it with a cat Um, now I don't know if you guys saw this, but, uh, on the, on the, uh, discord server here, but, uh, last week I had discovered that uh, thanks to Apocryphon interviewing Mark Sargent here, I discovered that Mark Sargent had said, if you think there's curvature in an airplane, take a picture of it, put it on a screen, hold a straight edge up to that screen. If there still is curvature, email it to me and I'll quit flat earth tomorrow. Mark Sargent said that to Apocryphon a couple weeks ago. So I'm like, oh, that's easy. Uh, I got four different photographs of the curvature of the horizon. I put a, I put it up on my screen. I held a straight edge up to it. And uh, I recorded a video. I made this video. Um, and then I sent the link to Mark along with a few other things. But the link to the video is an unlisted video. And Mark is the only one with the link to it other than me. He has yet to watch the video. But he gave his word that he would. And he told Apocryphon. He said, hey, I'm not lying. I check my email every day. He, he literally said that. 
Um, uh, he didn't, he didn't watch the, he didn't watch the video I sent him. He didn't want to look at the evidence. Anyway, he also hasn't quit flat earth, even though I did exactly what he said was necessary to quit flat earth. So uh, give him what credit where it's due. He has an actual answer to the question. What would cause you to change your mind? So flat earthers think about that. I can answer that question. I hope you can too. Anyway, um, to that topic, PhD Tony says, if Mark Sargent were capable of capable of acknowledging reality, he would be suffering extreme depression. True. Um, Chris says, Google Earth is based off the globe. So where is he coming from? Um, it is. Distances measured on Google Earth use the Haversign formula. So when Dan the Waterman, when I was asking him, hey, Dan, how did you get that 9.77 mile there? The answer is Google Maps, Google Earth. He used the Haversine formula to get that distance. If he used just a map map, well, that map, on that map, it'll tell you the projection that it's using. That's also a globe thing. So, hmm. Anyway, West Side Girl Reacts. Ooh says love your channel thank you west side girl uh grumpy old mechanic says which of the thousands of peer-reviewed scientific papers on on astronomy and geophysics have any of these morons proved fake it's a great question um let's see we've got uh globe cat <laughs> says MC2 and Flurfs use if you X, then I'll quit FE as their form of evidence supporting Flat Earth. Of course, they'll always ignore X. Yep. So Flat Earthers, in here. All right, let me ask you in a second here. I don't know. I don't know if there's many uh, Flat Earthers in, in here anymore, but uh, be thinking about this. What would you take? What would you accept? Gary Little says too, and any Flat Earther could use could not use VOR navigation, let alone celestial navigation. Yeah, VOR is visual uh, visual rules for navigation. I have on my wall behind me a uh, you know a VOR VFR VFR. Oh, hold on a second. Let me get this right. VOR. That's that's radio based, isn't it? That's not what I'm thinking of with this. VFR is this. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one, Gary Little. But yeah. Um, if you're talking about radio based things, then yes, the elevation of the plane makes a difference in whether or not it can talk to a, uh, a, a, a ground station a certain distance away. You need, there's a formula for that elevation. There is a blackout area, a shadow. If you're too low, you cannot speak to it. If the earth is flat, there's nothing in the way. There's no ex explanation for it. A Van Halen, <laughs> Valen has a round head says, oh, there are a lot of flat earthers in here. They're just scared. It's all right. I mean, if, you, if you're not Dan the Waterman and you're a douchebag like him, then hey, we can chat. Um, <laughs> I will stop believing in the globe. Oh, yeah, this is a good one. They're right here. When asked, what would it take? This person, I'm not going to read your name, says, I will stop believing in the globe if they can produce one accurate, usable, functional, no projected map of, of the globe or of the entire Earth with a scale absolutely um gary spoke up last night had a good conversation i saw that i wasn't able to listen live uh and i was busy today so i haven't been able to check in on that uh small time art says oh man how did you get charlie day to debate you um i have to look up who's charlie day um oh yes <laughs> from um from um, It's Always Sunny in uh, Philadelphia. Yeah, he's the guy with the... Yep, I know him. I don't know. He he just he just showed up. Rocket Scientist says, Dan, you are like a slinky. Not really good for anything, but fun when pushed down the stairs. <laughs> oh, yes. All right. PG Tony. It says, during the survey of the Mason-Dixon line, they noticed systematic errors due to the gravitational attraction of the Allegheny Mountains. And that's another, yeah, that is a, that is a confirmation of, of gravity. 
um, on my web page at mc2.net slash g, I think I do have a link to the the uh, measurements of the strength of gravity at the Shehelian Mountains. So if you're interested in reading that, I know Craig talks about it a lot. Um, but I actually have a link to it. If you want to go read it for yourself, you can go have a look. You can look at their methodology and see how they did it. Frank Burns says, <laughs> look at, explain this. All right. Mostly harmless says VFR is visual flight rules. Yes, I know VFR is visual flight rules, but what's VOR? Is that, is that right? Is it, uh, is that about radio communication? And uh, there, that's what I thought. Okay. Mostly harmless says VOR, VHF, omnidirectional range. So there you go. I, 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 I know a good bit about radio propagation uh, due to studying that at school and then more recently because of the insane Mark Steele claims about 5G. Um, so yes. Yeah, there's a formula. Why does the formula for that flat earthers, why does the formula for the distance that you can get something at different elevations include the radius of the earth? Oh, riddle me that. Yeah. Um, William Foley. So, oh, where'd it go? William Foley says 43 degrees, 30 minutes equals the Iowa, Minnesota border. All right. Thank you for that. So yeah, um, I, I, I knew that it was a, a straight line of latitude. So Minneapolis, um, the 45 degree North line of latitude crosses Minneapolis. I know this because when I did my, um, for the four times that I did the, um, um, uh, uh, solstice and equinox measurements of the elevation of the sun. I intentionally chose a location that was as close to 45 degrees. That was practical. I think I'm at 4505 degrees. So super close. Um, oh, is Gary here? That's cute. It's how we see things in our field of view. And then NASA yep. Shill says, where did you study optics? Oh, you can read all kinds of stuff on optics. A great. It's all questions. over the internet. You can, you can just Google all kinds of scientific uh, yeah, yeah. So articles. I, yeah. So be sure, be sure, whatever you claim you have, you have uh, see, these citations on angles, for right? it. But I'm going to, I'm just going to say, make sure you you have citations for everything that you see. McToon, don't we use uh, angles or don't they affect everything we see, how we see them and the angles we see them in? Yes. Yep. Okay. So you're set, but you're saying I'm wrong when I talk about angles and myths. Yeah. You, you don't a, understand the thing. topic at all, Gary. You know what Rayleigh criterion is? Yes, I definitely do. Okay, give me a definition so everybody understands it. Okay, Rayleigh criterion is when things are too small, you cannot see the details anymore. So, for example, a window in a building. Actually, wrong, have, wrong, uh, wrong, 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 wrong. So I, I'm, I'm not, kind of right, I'm not, but not all the I'm way. I'm not right. done talking, Gary. So just shush up a little. Yes, bit. I know you all are. Right. So, so, say, so you have a, a window in a building, and it's got a you know the old fashioned um, four panes, and you've got the crossbars in them. When you're close, you can see them. You move farther away. And eventually you cannot see the crossbars and, and the the window is just, you see the window, but the crossbars are blurred. They, they've merged in with the rest of the window. You move farther back and, and the entire window gets to be kind of small and you might just see a darker portion. You could also then say, well, let's have a window that has just a, an empty room behind it that's painted white and another window that has a plant in it and the bottom half of it is green. And as you move back, the white stays white. Eventually the crossbars get too small to see. And all you see is white with a little bit of a darkness in it because of the, the crossbars, whatever color they are, is going to just tint your, your view of it. And, and the plant is going to tint the rest of it, the bottom portion of it green as you get farther and farther away. At no point, just to be clear, at no point does something uh, get removed vertically and like things get shoveled down in your in your vertical stack because of the Rayleigh criterion. There you go. Actually, you could have simplified it. It's just simply when the uh, angular separation between two points is insufficient to resolve in a separate. So that would have been much easier and quicker. Um, so let me ask you a question. You got waves out in the distance. You're looking at a horizon. If you have uh, five foot waves where you see the horizon, you know, let's say they measure five foot waves, even though they won't look like five foot waves with your natural vision. But let's say another couple hundred yards past that is a six foot wave. And then another couple hundred yards past that is a seven foot wave. 
another couple hundred yards, there's an eight foot wave. Are you going to see, be able to resolve those as separate from the ones in the foreground? Uh, yeah, the, the waves that are farther back, if they're sticking up past it, you will be able to see them. They well, if they a won't... six foot one that's farther out, is it going to, are you going to be able to see it over a five foot one that's closer? Of course you have to, you have to get a little more detail on that. Uh, how high no, are you? No, no, no. Yeah. But uh, there comes a point well, where just, you can't resolve can't those, right? A six a foot wave here. past here, a five just, foot wave that's you much just further won't out. Let you're not going to see it as separate here. from the five foot wave, here, correct? Why won't you let me finish a sentence? What's wrong with you? Well, because I want you to answer it instead of fumbling around. All right, Gary. That's enough. That's enough, Gary, you little baby. You keep constantly interrupting me. You ask me a question, I give you the answer. Halfway into my sentence, there you jump in again, Gary. So, sorry. Not, not interested in being constantly interrupted. I will put into the chat there a little video I have obstructed building with crisp wave edges and people on discord you can have a look at it on your your own time there on the um on the live chat and then i will play it i'm going to put it up on the screen on youtube for people to look at so this but, I, then again, I took my fail to answer his question so i sorry he i couldn't answer his question he interrupted me before i was able to answer his question don I cannot have a conversation with a child that won't that asks a question and then halfway into my first sentence jumps on it. That's not a conversation. I won't be doing that, Gary. All right. So I'm showing. Well, I am listening for the answer. So what? So what is your answer? What's the question? Um, what Gary asked. Okay. The the waves. The waves beyond, so you have five foot waves and six foot waves. It depends on your elevation. If you're at a high elevation and if the earth is flat, then there would be no reason for the distant waves to be blocked. If you are below five feet, a five foot wave could obstruct everything below behind you. If you are at 10 feet and the highest wave is not 10 feet, then it can't obstruct things behind it the same way. So I, I have uh, on, on my screen right now, I have paused where you can see the actual wave and the, the peak of the wave at th just three seconds into the video. And, and so this wave, I've determined uh, through analysis, there's a buoy. And so we're seeing about somewhere around four to five miles is where this peak is that we're seeing the edge of the, of the waves here where they're kind of crisp. But that building behind it is many miles away. I think it's over 20 miles away. So it, it, uh, it begs the question then, why is the surface of the water, which is not visible from six miles, let's say five miles, out to the 24 mile mark? Why is the beach not visible? Why is the, the foundation of the building not visible? And why are the bottom, was the bottom about half of the building? Not visible. Rayleigh Criterion doesn't explain it. Ray Rayleigh Criterion explains why something might be undetailed. You wouldn't see details. So in this building here, the the windows of the building are too small, perhaps, to make out the details. But the whole building is there. So the bottom part of the building should be seen if the earth is flat. There's no explanation for it. How is that? How is because that? Because you're saying the building is... 20 miles away but you're saying the wave is five miles away yes but it's only a five foot wave i i don't i don't uh, think the wave would be quite that high but my uh my camera was at 10 feet above the water yeah but the distance from you to the wave is another five miles away from you right so you from the wave is five miles yeah. and the wave from the building is uh 15 miles right at least, yeah. So you're saying a two-foot wave that's five miles away from you, and we know that things look a lot smaller as they go further away from you, right? So a five-foot wave against 
a or a two foot wave against a building that's an extra 15 miles away from that actual wave is going to look a lot smaller than that actual building. Yeah, but but we have so, the building and the wave on screen at the same time, and we can see the relative size of the wave and the relative size of the building. Yeah, but the building's going to look a lot smaller go, than the go, wave because go, it's go 15 right at, miles further. Yeah, go right at go right at three three seconds in, you can see. That, that there's this hump of a wave there to the left of the building. It's not obstructing well, I, the building. Well, I can see the wave. It's, I it's can, uh, not like obstructing I'm the building. Like I'm on your YouTube, so I okay. can see the so wave. It's, it's to the that left of there. the building. So the building is obstructed by not waves. What is causing the building to be obstructed? There's no wave there. There's a wave there. I can see the wave. In front of the building? The wave is to the left uh, of the body building. of water that's in front of the building. There's a wave there, and you can see other waves um, that are closer. Okay, why can I not see the 15 miles of water between the that the edge there that I can see and the beach? Where is that? Where is the the beach? Where is the foundation of the building? Where is the bottom half of the building? It's behind the wave. Which wave? There's no wave there. That's just the the surface of the water. You say it's flat, not curved, right? Yeah, but water right. has waves. Okay, but Don, but Don, remember you just a minute ago said you're not a flat earther. And then you just said, yeah, when I asked if the water was flat. Don, you're a flat earther. You just exposed yourself. No, I'm making arguments against my um, thought process is I'm an anti-glober. So I don't believe your science i don't believe your math and i don't believe what you are projecting here okay present the correct is, science um, and the correct math instead of just blind assertions well you're showing me an image that i can clearly see that the front of the water or the beginning of the video at the lower part is a lot lower than the top part of the water. So I must look at it and say, well, that's a wave and that's a pretty high wave. If that wave or, or if that body of water is five miles away from me, I have to assume that's at least five to 10 foot wave. All right, let's, let's say it's a five foot wave. It wasn't that choppy to be a 10 foot wave if the, there was nobody surfing right if it, it's five foot you'd be you'd have people surfing this was well like, no one's surfing five miles away from shore dude this was not well this was you, not that, this that, was not that was five that that waves. wave was five miles Done. away and then the Done. building behind that wave do you is not know how waves away. work w waves are waves are taller near the shore because there isn't as much distance below the wave when they're far out they're smaller and they get bigger as they get closer to you and i can tell yes. you with with certainty that a five foot wave that's five miles away when it comes into shore would be significantly more than five feet tall we know that yeah, probably at least double okay and there weren't 10 foot waves there was nobody out there in february in pensacola beach florida surfing it was dead. All right. So so let's I'm going to I'm going to do this here. I'm at 10 feet. All right. 10 feet and then we've got a wave at 5 miles out that's at 5 feet, all right? And then we've got we've got 5 miles there and then we've got 15 miles to get to the building. Now, that angle Here's here's what you're missing, and I, I'm gonna guess that you're not you're not super good at at uh, trigonometry. Can you can you solve a triangle? Well, actually, I'm really good at trigonometry because that was my profession. Awesome. Then then at at five miles, what will the angular size of a five foot tall tall wave be? I'm not gonna work it out now. Well, how would you do it? Show me. You're the one that it was. It was your profession. Well, it was my I'm, profession. I'm asking you. Years you ago. How would you do it? I don't need to show you it. You oh. need to show me it oh, to here. prove oh, it to me. All right, got it. All right, that's that's fine. I didn't. I called your bluff, so that's fine. 
All right. My no, is... my bluff is not a bluff. Yeah, no, got it. All right. Like that's Five. all you guys do is call out people all for right. their professions and say, "Oh, right. well, if you can't what, do what this your, for what me was in your minutes, what was your well, profession? then you must be a liar." And that's just so much BS. What What was your profession? And by the way, by the way, five feet at five miles is forty arc seconds. Yeah, I uh, I just got it here. Let's see, day to do zero point zero one degrees, right? One hundredth of one degree. Yes, one one hundredth of one degree. That's how big it is. Now, um, at that same wave, when you are then 20 miles away, how much of a distant thing can it now obstruct? You ready for that one? Yes. All right, so we're 20 miles away now. Well, it's still all the waves, five miles away, right? Yeah, but how many arc seconds of the building can a five foot wave now obstruct? How much? How would you do that? Is it more than 0 0.01 degrees or less than 0 0.1 degrees? Tell me. Po point zero 0.01. Uh, you don't know? You can't do this trigonometry, just the rough greater than or less than version of it here? Well, not in my head, no. It's not difficult. It's going to be less. When it's farther away, it's going to be less. And that's the thing. You think... Yeah, all right, hold on. Somebody posted this. This is great. This is, this is what you think it is. The, uh, the, the, the picture posted by Pollum 47 how flat earthers think waves block buildings. They think that's... Yeah, that's exactly it. Somehow... I was higher than the wave, so not lower than the wave. If I was lower than the wave and the wave was somewhat close to me, then... Perhaps it could actually obstruct it. But since it's farther away, it's going to obstruct less than 0, uh, 0.1 degrees. 0 0.01. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, you can get the, the, the vertical amount that it can block. It's not going to work out in your favor there. So uh, so you are saying you don't believe in, in uh, how... Uh, the 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 math and science for the globe. Okay, fine. What is the math and science for your claim? You don't have it. I don't. I don't use it. Yeah, you don't have anything. You just say nah. -uh. All you have is incredulity. That doesn't actually work. That's not being a globe skeptic. That's just a denier. You're not woke because you're like nah. -uh. That's not woke. That's not. That's not intelligent. That's not, I'm trying to be smart and looking for the truth. No, you're not looking for the truth if, you're, if your answer to everything is, nah. -uh. What's wrong with it specifically? And correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. And silence is what I get every time. No, because I, I don't have to correct you. You have to correct you me. And that's, did, and that's no, why I'm in this channel is to not, learn more. Don, you did not identify any error. If you can't identify I don't have the to identify yes, the error, all, then you, oh, then you all must I have to do is then say you, that I observe things differently than what your science proves. No, you no. You need to show what's wrong, how it's wrong. You, all you do is all that your statement is is nuh uh. That's all you have is I don't like it, therefore I think it's wrong. You don't have a reason why it's wrong. You just no, say it's I wrong say, because no, you no. want there, it to be wrong. There's an exact reason why I find it wrong because my observations show me what other than what observations specifically what observations and include the measurements. My personal observations. I don't care about your words. I want to see the actual application of it. I want to see the actual trigonometry that well, you, see, you say you're good at, but you you have so far shown that you, you don't understand trigonometry at see, all. See, that's the problem, Don. because I could care less Don, about what you the think about evidence, what I know. The evidence because points my to you not knowing any trigonometry. That's the evidence here. You have said that you can do trigonometry, that's but fine. you've proven that's that you fine. don't understand the, the simple geometry involved here. 
look, I could care less what you think of me. I could care less if you think that I'm some some hick in the middle of nowhere in Canada. I could care less. Absolutely don't care if you put me down and say I don't understand nothing. I could care less about that. Show me or prove to me because this is what your job is. You've you've it's made this job. your job. This, you this is my created hobby. a YouTube channel. It's my hobby. To Get call right. out flat earthers or to call out globe deniers. But yet all you do is talk circles and then put everyone down that that doesn't agree with you 100%. You have not presented anything yet. All you have is incredulity so far. I don't so need far. to. Yes, you do. That, if you're no, going to be an honest channel. person, then then you will need to be the person that actual actually follows the evidence. But so far, all you do is say, nah, -uh. you don't agree with it. And when I ask for your evidence, it's my personal observations. You don't so show what? evidence. All you do is talk in circles. I absolutely you block do people show. from from talking to right. you. All right, and then you sit there and say, "Well, right. well, I couldn't show him the evidence there because he go. kept over talking me." I posted the evidence again, right there. I just posted the screenshot from Jesse Kozlowski measuring the linear drop over a distance. That's the eight inches per mile squared. That's a measurement of an eight inches per mile squared drop over zero point four eight miles. So. When you say, I just talk in circles. No, I present evidence. This is an actual measurement. None of you will look at this at all. None of you. If you think it's wrong, where is it wrong? Find the methodological errors. Find the trigonom trigonometric errors. No, none of you do that. You just say, uh-uh, and, mo and most of you won't even look at it. So, Don, if you think this is wrong... You're like, good, so I got to prove it. There it is. There is the measurement. What's wrong with the measurement? Anything? If you can't identify what's wrong with it, then then we'll just have to accept that it's correct and that there is an eight inches per mile squared drop over distance. Nothing. Exactly. See, and Every that's time. what you do. You Nothing. Sit there. I wait for you to finish. I don't know if you finish because you just stop talking, and then you're like, "Oh, look at that silence." All right. And well, then, like, this then is what super. You do you go create a YouTube go. channel to try to call go. people to make yourself go? Where's it wrong? Where's it wrong? Go. My observations. No. It what, where's it wrong? Show where it's wrong. It does not fit my observations. Show where I, it's wrong. I will not prove you otherwise through my own. So you can't. So so you That's cannot it. refute it. You must then just blindly say or just passively sit by and say, "Well, whatever. I can't touch that, so I'll I'll just run away from it." Yes, you have to run away from it. This is an actual measurement. You didn't do any measurements. You just say it's my observations, which is not useful. That's just nonsense. That's just you don't like it. Therefore, you're gonna not even pay attention to it. That's not under honest. your own opinion. No, people's this observations is, this is are useless. And you've already said this that is throughout all, how this is many objective. Discord channels I've been you in with. Will you will not you look at it. And say that anybody's personal observation, even your own, is useless because no, the math send it. does it. Send right. your personal observation. Apply the actual physics and math of it. Show it. Go ahead. Do you have an instrument observation, or are you just saying looks like or P900? Well, um, observation is looks like. Okay, so you're not using instrumentation. So your, your subjectivity, when angles get down into the one degree and sub-degree, which over 20 miles or 10 miles is a lot of feet, but your eye can't pick off a fraction of a degree but instrumentation can, and that's what we're that's what we're utilizing here. Purpose built, highly sensitive instrumentation. Well, I'm using and instruments too. What the instrument that God gave me? Okay, that's not exactly the definition of instrument I was looking for. <laughs> I was looking for scientific, ob objective, not subjective instrumentation, which can be replicated. 
by anybody, anytime. Well, it could be. When I, make measurements out here, when I make measurements out here in the field, and these are public access points, anybody can come out there with a you know, different piece of equipment. They're going to get very, very, very close to the same measurement I get because it's objective, not subjective, and not looks like. But now, now here's the here's where I here's where I show that you're dishonest, Don. Looks like there you go. Here comes looks like that you will not suddenly trust your eyes anymore. Right there, the curve of the horizon. You will reject that because it doesn't look like what you do and demand it to look like. Right? But we have explanation for that. You do? Oh, what's the prediction? Yes. What's the prediction? What? What? The curvature of the lens that's taking the photo. But that lens that's is... That's causing the appearance of the curve. Okay. And right. we all well, know that. It's, it's show, um, show more that, pronounced. That... Hold, hold on. The more pronounced... You made a claim. Um, you made a claim. You have the bird of proof. A fisheye, right? Don, you have that's a bird of proof. That's the more pronounced part. Don, Don, that is an anastigmatic lens. It's not a fisheye lens. It's a curved lens. No, all it, lenses are curved. It, but that lens does not add curve. It's an anastigmatic lens. It's specifically designed to not add curve. So you have claimed as that it's adding curve possible, with zero evidence possible. supporting so don't your say claim. that it doesn't add curve. It, it doesn't right. add curve as Quantify much. Quantify how much curve possible. that adds according to you. Since you say it's a fisheye lens, clearly you don't even know what a fisheye lens is. No, um, I said the, like it, it would be described as the more pronounced as we would understand today as the fisheye lens. All lenses are curved. So therefore, it, at, at any given time, an image would be curved at any given time. It just depends on, on how curved that, Im that lens is to actually be more curved. So you're saying that the lens is curved with zero evidence supporting your claim. All lenses are curved. Yeah, you're, and you're, we you're, know that. Yeah, and you're saying that the lens is producing that curve, and that it's not the actual curve of the yes. horizon. Okay, so you're number one. You're not trusting your eyes. Number two, you're making a claim without evidence. You have the burden of proof. No, well, we know that curved lenses create create curved images. No, we I know that. How much in does that lens add for curve? How much? Well, you get seem me the to camera. know. You seem to know more about that get lens. Get the camera with and zero... get me the lens, no, and I'm then sorry. I'll tell you how much of a but, curve it. But does you, you pre-announced. It. It's your Hold math, on. Don. You pre-announced that that was that was a, a a lens adding curve with zero knowledge of the lens. You lied, Don. You don't no, know anything about the lens. I know the lens is curved because all lenses are curved. And we know that. For just a fact. because a lens is curved doesn't mean it produces a curve in the photograph. Yes, that, it does. May I make an observation? Go ahead, Tony. When Don was asked for evidence, he refused to give it. When you gave him evidence, he just rejected it. Um, He's when you yeah. provide him evidence, he makes a declaration. When you ask him to prove it, he just continues to assert it with absolutely no substantiation mm -hmm. whatsoever. No, you um, didn't give me no evidence. He, he I'm not evidence talking of a curve on, on an image. I'm still talking. Oh, hold on a second, Don. Um, uh, to, to be brutally honest, this doesn't sound like somebody you can have a constructive conversation with. I think you're right. Um, right, Dad, because I'm not, not saying earthy. what you want me to say. Because of the fact Agreed. you gave me no evidence, you gave me a camera with a curved lens that's going to show at least minimal curve, and you're going to say, well, see, there's the curve. And I know, because I'm smart enough to know that all lenses have curves and will produce a minimal curve no matter what. Which direction? And you try to hide which that fact direction? because most people don't Don, know that. Don, lenses which are direction? Curved. Which direction All will that are. lens? Which direction will that cur that lens add curve up or down when it's above center frame? Do you know that? Does that uh, it lens according on the camera? And it depends on the lens. Well, I mean, but you know more. You know enough about this camera already because you've declared that it is adding the curve. So in in this particular type, in this particular lens, is this lens curving up or down? above center of frame because you know about this lens because you made declarations about it with zero evidence go ahead tell us about it 
Well, I would have to assume that it's pointing downwards. Oh, you're Because assuming. of the fact there's a curve oh, pointing downwards. Now, if the curve was assuming. pointing upwards, then, then I would say that the curve God, was pointing upwards. You're assuming. You and know nothing so about it. You prove me wrong because the evidence sits there. There's going to be a curve no matter what in all images because well, of the shape of well, the lens. Well, which direction? If it's inward or outward, it doesn't matter. You don't Except even know for the shape you don't of know. the curve. Right. Let, let's let's do this. Let's let's uh this this will be good. Uh, I'm gonna drop a screenshot in. Here you go. Here's a screenshot. So look at that right there. That's taken with a, a camera. You see that line across the top there? Is that line curved? Doesn't appear to be. Okay. So if if that if that lens took a picture of of uh, a a straight or curved line in that portion of the of the frame, it would not add distortion. Do you agree? Depends on the distance. Why does the of distance that line change? like that why does the line distance change anything? Refraction of light in towards the lens. All right, sorry, I'm, we're just talking about the lens. So if if the the curve or straight whatever it is that you're looking at whatever it is that the the camera is taking a photograph of uh is curved or straight will the lens add any curve or straight to it or will it will it leave it the true curve or straightness of it it depends on the distance from the cam or the camera to the object why because the uh, collection of light from the lens. Okay, I'm going to need the citation for that done. Uh, that's just common sense. And no, sorry, common sense it. is not a citation. The distance that something is from the camera does not in itself cause curve in any one particular direction. So the amount of light collected from a camera does not alter an image, right? The amount of light changes the brightness of it. Doesn't add doesn't curve. The amount of light does the not image, right? the the amount of light does not add or remove curve. It only adds or removes brightness. Then why do we have fisheye lenses? It has nothing to do with brightness or the amount of light. And this it's is the amount of light being collected from the lens. Has nothing to do with it, a fisheye lens. This is not a fisheye lens. A fisheye lens is produces a circular photograph. You know a fisheye lens because it's a circle. You've never seen, probably, an actual fisheye photograph. You've seen things with barrel distortion that you incorrectly called fisheye. A GoPro is not a fisheye. Do you know that, Don? Well, they call it a fisheye. But, Don, do you know that a GoPro is not actually a fisheye? It's just a wild, wide field of view with barrel distortion. Do you know that, Don? What's that, sorry? A GoPro has a wild, wide field of view with barrel distortion. Right, but when we explain like fisheye and stuff like that, it's the curvature that we're explaining. But it's not, but it's not fisheye, though. No, and... Okay, how well, about you just say barrel distortion uh, instead of fisheye? Scientifically or whatever, like, you guys want to explain fisheye, but the average person would understand when when somebody sits there and says fisheye sees... Because that's what you do, too, is you try to take a layman's term that everybody would understand, and that's what most of us talk in, is so everybody is on trying to right. understand Got it. All right. the <laughs> argument, and yep, then yep. you All try right. to say, Let's well, that's not Let's what it really on, means. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't care what it, it really Got means. It. The layman knows what it means. All right, Don, I put another picture in there. Do you see that one? There's an, uh, that same line. It's in the bottom of the frame. Do you see that? Well, you tried to ignore Professor Park's PhD uh, image, which absolutely proves lenses are curved. I, I There's no question and, about lenses being and curved. The, and the but, image actually curves because of the light. I'm, I'm asking you, that, that picture that I just put in, is that line. So that, that line in reality is straight. We, It's a known straight line in reality. And that camera has taken a picture of that known straight line in reality. Now, did that camera uh, reproduce the straightness of that line or did it add a bunch of curve to that line? 
well, that looks like a two foot shelf. So no, it didn't add any curvature to yeah. it. Why does the two foot shelf have anything to do with it? It's whether it's, or it's not in, the in lens. Light. So, so um, you're, look, take you're, a look at Professor Park's PhD image. Just scroll up a little bit. And that will explain the curvature of images. No, that, that doesn't because this particular yeah, image that I'm not. looking at right now is an image taken through a lens and that straight line in reality is reproduced in the camera. How does that straight line in reality Roll look down in the quickly camera? because you can't explain the curvature oh, that oh. he's showing. Hold on. Hold on. I'm asking you just to give me a simple yes or no. Does this straight line in reality get reproduced as a straight line in the photograph? From two feet away from the object, yes. Okay. It's a straight. The, it's straight. All right. So now. And it's just like if you take a GoPro, like a fish right, eye so, lens, so or now, a GoPro's um, curved. All right. So. All right. So Pollum, Pollum, Pollum gave Pollum gave a actual fish eye photograph. You see how it's round there? Yeah. See that? All right. So, but that's not it. I mean, that shows the curve. There is a sh curve added. That's a known straight line in reality that the lens added curve to. I don't know if he took a picture or if that's uh, it actually looks like a real picture um, because it looks like there's a computer screen over the left side. Uh, um, Almost looks like a peak hole, like anyway, through your door. It does sort of look like that. So I don't know if it was a real uh, lens or if that was digital, digitally done. So, two balls going opposite ways, and that's why you get that yeah. 3D All right, so, look. But the thing is, the question is, does the lens that I'm talking about, that I'm giving you these, these samples of, does this lens add curve? And you have agreed in both instances where the lens, where the uh, line was above center frame and below center frame, that the lens is not adding curve. When you're two feet away from the image, no. I, I don't know why this, this two feet away thing has anything to do with it. Why do you keep going with that? Red herring. Because the light, the refraction of the light on the lens causes the curve. The farther you are away from the object you're taking the picture of, the more light needs to be taken in to actually produce that picture. Okay. And uh, more light that's taken in, that light has to bend to actually reach the lens and then to also take the picture. Okay, I'm going to need so a citation so that, that things that are farther away get curved in a lens that does not add distortion. I'm going to need a citation for that. Look at Professor Park's PhD image no. that shows you exactly the images being curved. That 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 does not show what you're claiming because that is showing that that lines that are coming in parallel which things far away or near coming in parallel it doesn't matter are going to be refracted through both lenses and then be reproduced on the 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 uh, um the camera, the you know, the film or the sensor. So, yeah, I, I'm if still I'm asking. Like, just real quick, Don, because you keep bringing me up, and I'm actually getting kind of annoyed by it. That is showing a compound lens, which is frequently used in astronomy, and they are frequently used because of distortion. We want as flat a field as possible because we want to be able to look at anything within that field with the same amount of precision. That particular example shows you that. Um, we correct for chromatic aberration because we know that blue light and red light refract differently. So we use a flint like that in order to focus all of the light, regardless of wavelength, into the same um, into the same point. And I can also show you a compound lens which corrects for astigmatism, which basically would have field curvature. So please stop misrepresent, uh, mis misrepresenting me. I asked you specifically how that compound lens would affect the curvature of an image. So please do not try to use me as an example of to debunk MC2. I am using your image. I'm not using you because the light still bends. I don't think he, I and don't you think just you proved it in that image. The light bends. There's the, no question the camera, about the light bending. If, if the light didn't bend, the camera, then the camera could not work. The camera does not take an, a picture of the actual image. It takes the the picture of the light. Yeah, it only has the light that comes to it. You're right. And so the question I'm I'm asking because well, you're talking about if the, the lens bending and it's taking an image of the light. Therefore, 
the image has to be bent some in in some form or fashion. I'm still asking, and you still are not answering, for the citation for what causes something that's far away to be distorted by a lens that does not distort things that are near. I need a citation on that. Okay, let's see. Um, just off the top of my head. Um... Making up stuff is what he's doing. He's got nothing. We know that. I'm muted right now, just so you know. Uh, can't I can't give you citations, but I can give you observation is basically uh, light bends further the, the, fur, the further you uh, are away from it. That makes no sense. Thank you for not making yeah, any sense. Does. Here's how yes. you could easily test that, Don. Here's how you could easily test that. Get a straight edge. Get an eight foot long ruler. Go to Menards and buy yourself a ruler an eight foot long one, take a photograph of it nice and close. Then use that same ruler, that same camera and move far, far away. And then take a picture of it again. According to you, that ruler will now be bent. It now must be bent because for some reason it's far away and magically, inexplicably, that lens has now somehow turned into a fisheye lens, as you say to cause things to bend that are far away that are not bent when they're near. I don't know how this is happening, but I definitely. I don't need to do it because you ahead. just did it. No, I didn't do anything. I just told you how you could test yes, it. The you uh, test image your you hypothesis. posted at 1109, you proved that the farther you move away from an image, the more it's going to bend down at the edges. And that's because right, the edge of the lens is curved. Oh my gosh, let's see this. No, this is you presuming that the earth is flat. That's your that's your presumption going into it though, Don. No, I did not. That's your presumption. That, that I, is 100% your you are image saying, you are presuming the that the the horizon is flat and you are presuming that the distance or the lens is causing it to be curved when in reality we know you got nothing. You're just making this stuff up. So that's, that's you, a presumption. So I can actually see this now. So you drew a flat line across that horizon, right? Yes, there is a flat line across that horizon. No, um, post that picture up again, will you? Because I'm on your YouTube. I can't see small little Discord Im images. I mean, you can go to my website, mc2.net slash curve, and download the full resolution scan. So you're trying to say that that is because of a curve that's because the horizon is curved 100 percent. that's because the horizon is curved well i don't know how you look at images but i can see that as a uh, light like that little curve that's in the middle looks like light so it still goes with my argument that no, it's just light no it's, it's your claim without evidence supporting it you've said that it has to curve for some reason we don't know why no, I said it has to curve because of the refraction of light towards the lens. Yeah, in the lens. You're saying the, the lens camera. is doing it or the distance is doing it. Which one? Well, both. The lens and the distance. How? Because the it's lens an, has to take in more light. It's an anastigmatic lens. It's specifically designed to not add curvature, to not distort. That's the point of it. Right. And that is very little distortion to it. Extremely low distortion to yes, it. Yes, that's because that's what the lens is supposed is doing. But right. there's still distortion to it. Because right, you well, it you, tries to eliminate as much as possible. You, your, but it your, can't eliminate all of it. Sure. Right? Your claim is is then that this curve, all of the curve that we're seeing is due to the distortion. You're gonna need to support that claim. But here I'll zoom in nice and close. I have can the I, original scan. Can I just ask a question? Sorry, Tim. Let me, I'll, I'll go across and then the, yeah. the, the, the photograph here. And then, uh, so here is, here's the zoom in on, on my YouTube channel. I'm zooming in. You can see that line and I'm going across here in the middle. It's, it's peaking. And then on the far right side, it comes down again towards that line. All right, go ahead, Tony. I just wanted to ask Don to substantiate his claim that if you take in more light, the angle of refraction increases. There's more light being distorted. 
um, that doesn't change the angle by which it is being distorted. It hides a lot more of the image. Do if you, more, um, right? well, done. Do you you're, think you're, you compress the image? You're babbling nonsense. The, the, the amount of light passing through a lens doesn't change the angle that that lens distorts the light. Tony, Tony I think that he thinks that Snell's Law includes some sort of magnitude of light in it. Well, maybe he, he okay, does. So He's wrong. The, <laughs> the edges of the lens compress it because there's more light going to or there's more light going to an area of the lens that's actually smaller, right? So, sorry, because hold on. It's I, I, the, the, the straws are gone, Don. There's no more straws. Stop grasping. No, because Stop grasping. you are refusing. No, because you just simply say, oh, well, you're lying. You're lying. And it's and it's common you sense. You are not supporting no, I'm your not claim. I'm saying that you're lying. I'm saying that you're ignorant and wrong. <laughs> Or ignorant it's, and wrong. It doesn't yeah. matter. Lying you are ignorant or, ignorant and wrong. or wrong is the same thing because we know that uh, the flat part of the lens is going to be a little bit more flatter than the curved part because the curved part is going to compress the what light is coming into it. And we know that. Right. And that's why it looks curved. But also for some reason, distance, image distance also does it too. Image. Somehow. Somehow, Tony, distance also makes the lens more curvy. Uh, than than if it's not distant somehow magically well, we don't know how yeah, because there's it's, com it's, it's part it's of snell's it's of also part image. of snell's law so snell's law has has distance and snell's law has a quantity of light now according to don amazing yeah. new research um, we're getting here tonight ladies and gentlemen none of this is true don it's simply false you're making stuff up and it doesn't make sense and you can oh, tell, you can sit here sense. and you, I'm still speaking. And you can sit here and you can reassert it over and over again. And when people who have vastly more expertise in optics, in um, observations, in the character of light, tell you you're wrong, you just persist in this delusional fantasy that you're one of the world's foremost experts on how lenses work. You're not. Grow up. And yeah. I never said that. I yeah, never you said are. I was You 100% expert, are claiming that you know more than, than experts. No, I'm saying I know how lenses work. No, you don't. Are you, you familiar? clearly are you familiar don't know how lenses work. You clearly don't are know you, how lenses work. Are you familiar with the science of photogrammetry? I thought not. No. You you can bring up all the little magical words you want. I, I know how a lens works. The center of a lens will be more pronounced than the edges of a camera lens. More pronounced. Why? What, what do you mean more pronounced? What, what does that mean, more be, pronounced? Well, be more accurate than the edges. Okay, so the opposite of more pronounced, less pronounced. If there's, if there's distortion, the center is less, less distortion than in the, the edges. Right? Yes. Okay. Or I think I... I think I yeah, but you, I mean, you know how lenses work. Well, well, not so better. I, and I'm not saying it's better than you. Just because you can't um, over explain my explanation does not mean that you get to down talk me D Don, you didn't or actually... just say that I'm a stupid moron because you don't when, understand when did I say that, that Don? compression, that compression of an image is more on the sides than in the actual middle of the actual image. All right, but, but, but that doesn't and, really... And you don't need doesn't... computer software to compress an image. All you what? need to do is have more light go towards the sides. Why does more light have anything to do with it, Don? I'm still asking that one. That seems ridiculous. There's no part of optics that says more light will cause things to be re bent more or refracted more than less light. No part of that. I'm not going to sit here and, and argue about it all all it's night for you guys to put claim, me down Don. constantly. Like, Don, come on, it's a so baseless for, claim. So again, for Don, for a small object that is far away, you you need more light. How do um, cameramen? How do photographers make sure they get more light from such an object? Uh usually also, um, well, like a telescope, it's backlight.
Dude, you don't they know lengthen what... the exposure, right? They keep the shutter open for a longer well, there's, time. There's three so ways more or, yeah, you can through. super expose it. Yeah, okay. Super. So there's no change in the amount of light coming through the lens per unit time, is there? But the light collected from the lens. Um, is spread out over time. It's not all coming through all at once. They haven't gone, let's supercharge the light here and try it, ram it through the lens. Not that that would change the geometry, but what they're doing is they're letting the lens operate exactly the same as it does for a shorter um, exposure. They're just lengthening the exposure. So the amount of light passing through the, through the lens from that object is exactly the same in both instances. But it's still not 100% accurate because it will still give curve. That doesn't matter. What matters is the distance doesn't affect the amount of refraction you observe. You changed observe. your claim there, Don. Yes, you changed your yes, claim. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. You it does. keep Citation on saying that, needed. but you cannot substantiate that claim. Every time you're asked to explain how this is working, your explanation makes no sense. And you just say, yes, it does, yes, it does, yes, it does. Explain how more light per unit time is coming from the distant object through the lens. <laughs> Hold on a second. We got, we got Globe Cat. Globe Dog? says, has Don. Don Snell's Law. A1 times sine of T1 times R, R1 over A2 times sine T2 times R2 equals N2 over N1. That's Don's Snell's Law, where A is the amount of light coming in and R is the distance between the source and observer at the boundary. Amazing! We've got a formula. Don, you can go test it now. Can I ask some question? Uh, you, you go ahead. So, Don, you claim horizon is straight line, right? All right, I'm going to pop out for a second here. Um, got, got a few things to read. Um, Caucasian Sensation says surveyors convert the two states back to basics. Playing some word games there. Bill Tetley says, sorry if my membership message came across wrong. I, I spent nearly 15 minutes trying to send that last YouTube uh, wanted to censor me for mentioning Facebook. So let me get to, to Bill Tetley. Say, can you check your DMs in your not Discord social media, FB? Later, I sent you a message just looking for Fudgy the Whale. <laughs> uh, yes, Bill Tetley, I will have a look. Um, for reference, I have a, a MC Tune um facebook page and i have a michael toon facebook personal account i'm most active on my personal account so if you find michael toon on facebook that's the one if you want to message me that's the best place to, to contact me um the other one i don't check as often i don't get uh, as many notifications um on that so anyway for for reference but yes bill thank you I will I will give it a check. Uh Mr. E Man gifted 10 memberships. Thank you for that, Mr. E Man. Um David Wellman says, I've heard there's a dwarf shortage. <laughs> I used a line and somebody got mad at me. One person I think commented it. I said it's like so I'll do it again, and that person can get mad again, I guess. Um said something to the effect of uh somebody was bragging up about something but it wasn't all that braggadocious and i'm like that's like claiming you're the tallest midget so there you go uh the wrong the the, the insensitive term i suppose is probably really just as insensitive to say that's like claiming you're the tallest dwarf um which is a more appropriate term apparently i it, it, and i've i've heard it both ways i've heard people say that both are acceptable i don't know uh, i don't mean to be uh insulting people um but all the the, the corral corollary is the the shortest giant how tall is the shortest giant so all right uh lord illuminous poos is concave huh where's then where's voyager one been for the last 40 plus years 
It's a great question. Of course, just like for the Flat Earthers, they just have to blanket claim that everybody's lying. It's a sad, sad world to live in, to just say that that many people are in on it somehow. Think about, let's think about this for a second. Voyager 1, Voyager 2. So recently there's been news that, I don't know, one of the two um, was off track and it wasn't pointing correctly towards Earth. So we were not able to get signals from it because it was very slightly off. And, and at that distance, 18 and a half, um, 18 and a half light hours away outside our solar system now, um, a small angular change is, is a, a big, a big linear change at that distance. Um, and so it went out of contact. There were some backup systems. I didn't know anything about this until recently. Amazing. Um, where we were able to send it a signal to say, hey, you are a little bit off track. You need to correct yourself to this quantity. And then 18 and a half uh, hours it went to it, and then 18 and a half hours back to get the answer saying, um, oh, gotcha, I've fixed it. Um, anyway, think about that. Think about how that would have to be faked. Are the people that are sending the signal to Voyager and receiving the data back from Voyager in on it? Or is the other side of this, this if there's, there's some sort of a, a facade of a wall where they, they receive, where, where somebody's on the other side that's pretending, that's inventing these signals from Voyager and saying, oh, let's invent today that it's no longer angled correctly and let's send it and let's let those people think who actually are on the other side of the wall the facade let them think that they need to now send a signal to it to tell it to correct itself or are they all in on it right and and they're like oh they're compartmentalized the problem is how could you compartmentalize that the people that designed it, the people that then for 40 some years have interacted with it, that have read the documentation and seen what it did and sent signals to it and got signals back, they are in on If they're not in on it, then the people on the other side of that facade of a wall must be really, really good at faking it. But that only goes so far because engineers do things that, and then they interact themselves with it. So somebody must be, you know, so something newer than Voyager, something on the ISS. An engineer says, well, I wrote some code. It's running on this device on the ISS that was installed recently, and I'm going to send a signal to it, and it sends me a signal back. How does that work? Is there a person or a team assigned to faking that device? Or are all of those engineers in on it? And many of them are contractors. They don't they're not employed by NASA. They're independent companies working for NASA. How does that work? Which which is it? Are they all in on it and they've never had a, a whistleblower? Or is there a facade of a wall and somebody knows enough about the systems that they're able to fake? They're not the engineers that made the system. They're not because they're on, they're on this side of the wall. That side of the wall is the people that are faking and fooling the engineers. Well, they got to be good got to be really good um <clears throat> but it gets worse than that for the people claiming that there's this uh compartmentalization wall because programmers i'm a programmer we make mistakes believe it or not we make mistakes in our code and the mistakes that we make in our code are not documented if we knew there was a mistake in the code enough to document it we'd probably just go fix it, if possible. Certainly there are mistakes in code that cannot be fixed. But if it's not documented, how could this compartmentalization cause the error to happen on the other side of the compartment and then come back and say, oh no, I made a mistake in my code. Let me write a, write a fix to it, upload it to the thing, and now we got it back saying, yep, okay, so now we won't make that mistake anymore. How was that un 
documented mistake exposed by the people on the other side of the, the compartment. Absolutely ridiculous for anybody to make a claim like that. Zero intelligence to that kind of claim. But these people have never engineered anything in their lives. Right? I've said before, nobody could fake me in the email system that I wrote. Nobody could. I interact with it in ways that nobody, even reading all of the documentation, could ever do. Right? Now, I don't document things as well as NASA requires. Certainly, we, we don't. <laughs> no, no, uh, it's rare to find anybody that documents that well. So, all right, we got some Voyager 2 stuff coming, so I'll come get that um, in a minute. Mr. E-Man, oh wait, Indy Tiger Sci-Fi Review for $20. Thank you very much, Indy. Says, I was positively charged once, but the judge threw the case out due to lack of evidence. <laughs> Speaking of lack of evidence... Mr. E-Man says, I must have missed all the flat earth evidence. I might have to watch you back later just in case I missed it. Well, definitely do that. But you won't find any. Jimmy Gee says, how much till, uh, how much titty can a lake caca? <laughs> how much titty can a lake caca? Seven sheep units. Perfect, Jimmy Gee. Tim Davidson says, didn't Don say the three boats were behind a wave on Fight's stream? Um, yeah, Don said, so Don, for not being a flat earther, sure talks like a flat earther. Seriously. My point to him was, we all know what you are. When you say you're a, you're a globe skeptic, we know. You hug your um, Gleason map pillow to sleep every night. And cry, saying, I wish there was evidence. I wish. Oh, dear Gleason. Dear Gleason, please bring me some evidence. Yeah, Don Petta, you're a flat earther. We know it. It's obvious. Um, Cal says, so he is a mathematician. No, obviously Don Pettit does not do trigonometry. He could not figure out that a five-foot wave would would obstruct a very tiny portion <laughs> when you're high when you're when you're 10 feet up how much oh my gosh so it's so it's such a small amount <laughs> right the the geometry of it i mean no nobody that understands geometry could be a flat earther unless it's just god is lying to us flat earther which was um um i don't know you know uh, you don't know who i'm talking about i know who i'm talking about orthogonal guy dear dear, dear me um god. mind of god mind of god he he thought that the the earth looked like a globe and that was because god was lying to us but the earth was actually flat so um uh pythagoras says i'm a pro trigmentalist love that pythagoras very nice I see Spin is a new member at Einstein. Maybe that a renewal. Um, David says, picture of flat horizon. See, the earth is flat. Picture of curved horizon. The lens is curved. Absolutely. It's the, the standard, the stock dual standard of the flat earther. Um, every, everything I don't like is fake. This is it. Um, you know, they, it's, it's actually the third law of flurf. Look it up. They are a pseudoscientist when evaluating flat earth evidence and a science denier when evaluating globe evidence. They'll accept anything if it supports their pre-selected conclusion. And they'll reject everything if it doesn't support the pre-selected conclusion. Um, but the mind of a scientist, you read Lee McIntyre's book, um, how to talk to a science denier and then his previous books the uh, something about how scientists actually think a scientist when given new evidence is ready to change their mind we should all be like that right so when i look at so so i i recently uh was sent a um if you saw this run zay tau had a thing from 2015 where he said uh he he you know, claimed that he dispro disproved uh, special relativity. Um, so I watched it. I'm like, okay, well, I'll give it a shot. The guy, the guy knew math well enough, um, 
and uh, had had a um, you know some interesting claims. And I went into it saying, well, let's see it. Well, in the end, I I was very much unconvinced because basically he's like, well, this doesn't make sense because common sense. Sorry, relativity doesn't make sense according to common sense, but it does make sense according to actual evidence. So evidence wins. Evidence always wins. So, all right. Um, the Sun Express says all lenses are curved. Thus, people who wear glasses can't see straight lines. Rulers be damned. Flurf intelligence, y'all. Well, I mean, that, that, I mean, right here. This is, this is a camera lens right here. This is a, a Sony camera with the kit lens. It's, uh, and, uh, the, and it's curved. And this is a straight edge. I'll get it to right here. This is a straight edge. Right there. Below center frame. Look at that. It appears straight. Even though that lens is curved, this appears straight. Above center frame. Same thing. For some reason, some inexplicable reason, he thinks that something being far away will appear curved just because it's far away with no reason no reason at all david wellman says real developers don't document their code it's hard enough to write it should be hard to understand um no david wellman well when i write code i'm writing for future me i'm giving future me uh this code and I, w I like future me, and present me generally likes past me, because past me was nice to present me by writing good code that was easy to read. So when I go into code that is old, old, I've, every once in a while I'm like, oh, jeez, this is going to be, this is old stuff. And I go into it, I'm like, oh. That's pretty good. I understand it. I'm like, I have no no recollection of, of the details of the code. It's, it's, you know, it's not on the, the shelf anymore. It all fell off the shelf. And I go in there and I'm like, hey, look at that. Camel case. Um, variable names are three, four words, right? With uh, modern development environments. You, you, don't, uh, you don't have to type them all out. So, um, But I don't know. It's a good joke. I get it. But that's true, David Wellman, for Pearl. Always true for Pearl. Um, Chronic Avenger says, so why isn't the horizon always curved in pictures? Fantastic. I should have just asked. That's really good. Why, according to him, there should never be a curved horizon because that curved, or that, or sorry, a straight horizon. Because that horizon is miles away. And so no flat earther could say earth flat because earth look flat, right? Your eyeballs are curved. It's such a lame argument to say that lenses are curved. Therefore, nothing we see could ever appear straight. Instant fail. David Villar says flat earther. Ooh, hold on. It jumped. Jumped on me here. Flat earther. If you turn the camera upside down, then your alleged bend direction will also. But it doesn't. Liar. Well, I, all you need to actually do is tip it up and down because it's not just upside down. Well, some of them, they have to get desperate because the the, the video that Wolfie did, um, he tips the camera up and down. So according to them, one of their potential, one of their potential um, explanations that they might, they say is, is that the lens always curves things that direction there's some lens that nobody's ever seen before that makes the curve one direction always well good luck with that but yes turning it upside down here's the thing if you go watch the soundly live stream you remember soundly he went to lake poncha train a second time this was his big one he went to there he went jesse kozlowski and some other people geo i think was there geo streber and he he was up in up high in the um the hotel and his video out the window you can see the curve going and and i said soundly turn the camera upside down 
because just one of the things that they might claim. And so he turned it upside down. So you go watch that. You'll see. Let's see. Um, uh, he, Professor Parks PhD says, just started my profession in trigonometry. And so I can now afford super chess. What is a profession in trigonometry? Thank you, Professor Parks. Love your stuff. Dude, if, if people, hold on. Can somebody grab Professor Parks' channel link? I love I love watching his stuff. Um, he's good. He's really good. Um, yeah, somebody drop that in. I'll pin it even. Uh, oh, all right. I see Spin says, if camel case once, camel case always. Descriptive var names functions are king. Yes. And for reference, curly brackets go on the next line. And the ending curly brackets go on a line by themselves as well. Like, oh, it, it's vertically. It takes more room vertically. That's fine. I have a big monitor. Um, is that, that's Allman style, not Kerning and Ritchie style. There you go. Software nerds. Uh, Mr. Eman says, for the distorted high pressure photon compression density distortion. <laughs> Thank you for that one. Uh, well, the straw grasping. David Villar says, dim the lights. The angles remain the same. The curvature is in the middle as well as the edges. Stop lying, old flat earthers. Stop lying. Yeah, I don't know why the quantity of light. That's a, a, so ridiculous. Would make it curve more. How silly. Uh, you are mopped, says Tune. I'll email you a Zoom link tomorrow for Thursday. And that's his first super chat. Thank you for that. Uh, so, and if you're wondering, I am going to be I'm chatting with, with him. Um, did I, uh, oh, no, I didn't identify. Anyway, yeah, I have it in my, my calendar, but I don't, I didn't put the details. I usually try to put details in the calendar. Yep, that'll be coming up, people. David Villar says, you take a photograph with a long exposure or short exposure of the same distant object, it will look exactly the same I just did. Yes. Like, how... The mind, just the, the, the gears just grinding of a flat earther that, that to, to just the desperation. that oh, Please, please let me find some reason, some excuse is what they're doing. Like they're just, just look, just, oh, it's farther away. So it's for some reason curved. Um, oh, that's a, that's a fish eye. No, it's not. Um, DJ Moss says, DJ Moss, M-O-S-S-E? I almost said Moose, DJ Moose. DJ Moss says, could any Globe Denier post their own research link where I could see their work? Or any Globe Denier's research? I mean, they never... Right, so, so they do two things. They get a high-altitude balloon with a GoPro lens, and then they, they crop a certain selection of it, so that it appears flat when the horizon is slightly below a uh, center of frame. It takes the actual curve that's there and bends it up so that uh, to, to get rid of it. That's that's one thing that they do. The only other thing that they do is they do um, lasers and, and lights across water uh, at low elevation. That's it. Those are their two things. It's their go-to. Dan the Waterman's like, I got 35 observations. They're all across water at low elevation or uh, at the salt flats at low elevation. And how many of them do you measure the vertical temperature gradient? Exactly zero. Why did you not measure the vertical temperature gradient? Because it won't support your required conclusion. That's why, Dan the Waterman, you are not interested in the truth. You are only looking for experiments that confirm your pre-selected conclusion. That's it. All right, S vector. Hold on. What's your position on no curly braces for a single command line? For a single line? Um, uh, I generally put it in... Uh, hold on. In Professor Parks' channel there. I generally put it... Uh, that take a, I give it three lines. Usually it's function, whatever this declaration, right? New line, curly bracket, uh, new line, return value, semicolon, new line, 
a closed curly bracket. Sometimes for brevity, I'll put all of that together on the line, uh, like if it's an if statement or something, right? I'll put it all on the if, is if there's no else. Uh, or if it's a function, right? A function that's, especially if it's a mutator or accessor, I'll put it on one line. Um, but generally, no, I won't even do that. Generally, I, I take up that vertical space. Um, and with modern IDEs, it's quick. You know, you, you declare your function, you hit enter, you type open curly bracket, you hit enter, the closing curly bracket is there, it's pre-indented, you type return, and then you put in the value. So, all right. Sorry, if you're not a programmer, <coughs> that might not mean much to you. Lord Illuminous Pooh says, some under tall people don't like dwarf and others don't like midget. So I just call them Oompa Loompas. None of them like that. <laughs> So I wrote a script for a Santos video. I haven't used yet. I don't know if I'll use it. I might. But I took every single short person thing I could think of, including Oompa Loompa, and put it into the script <laughs> for Santos. I need to do it. Yeah, I mean, he's such a despicable person. It, 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 right? Nobody, nobody on the globe could be bothered by it. By, by his his butt hurt, uh, but he but he has stopped doing videos for a while. So uh, fine, we'll stop for a while. But uh, dude, he is. If you're ever feeling like uh, informing YouTube of any uh, any things that YouTube might not like, go to his channel. You'll find a lot. Well, you know what I'm talking about Professor Parks. Oh yeah. Um, Mr. E-Man says, I know a technician that was working on the station trying to reestablish communication with Voyager 2. So, either he was compartmentalized and somebody was on the other side of that compartment faking it for him, or he's in on it. Neither answer works because the he's in on it version requires millions of people. And the compartmentalized version of it is completely impossible. Uh, Tim Davis says, says, I am a luminous poo. Are you? Awesome. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, Glover for Life says, I'm here to see my boy Peachy Tony Hulk off. Let me catch up with the super chats and then let's see where, where Tony's at. He's still, yep, he's still in the chat. Maybe we can, we can see him Hulk out. Uh, Lord Illuminous Poo says, no, he's not. Well, Tim Davidson Lord Illuminous Pooh is Lord Illuminous Pooh, and he says you're not Lord Illuminous Pooh. So, I think I think it's that Spider-Man uh, meme saying who's who's the fake one. Um, but Lord Illuminous Pooh has the name Lord. Of, well, he could have faked that name. Hmm. But he is a moderator and has been a member for a long time. So, little bit of credibility there. Um, I see. Spin says one of the chat. If you emailed Mark Sargent. All right, right now. One in the chat, if you eat, actually, I'm going to change that. Don't do that. I'm going to ask, I'm going to do a poll. So did you email? Um, because I want the actual number. We just do a one in the chat. So good, good idea though. Thank you for that. Um, I see spin. Did you email Mark Sargent? Now don't answer wrong. Think about the question. Think about clicking yes when it's yes and no when it's no. Here you go. Um, my guess is that he got a, about 50. In fact, the script that I already recorded for tomorrow says I guessed at 50. So we'll see. We'll see how good of a guess that is. Of course, not everybody that emailed him is necessarily in this chat, but I'm getting way too many no's, people. Oh, I got I got 13% say yes out of 52. All right. Help me yeses. Help me yeses. <laughs> David Wellman, uh, real developers don't document their code. Lorbert Illuminous Poo says, I have an open mind and nothing you say will change my opinion about that. That's Flat Earthers to a T, yeah. Um, mel melodic lyrics, the real question, camel or snake case? Camel case. Do not like underscore um, generally because it's, it's a harder character to type because of where it is on the keyboard. You gotta, your hands gotta do this. Um, but I do prefix 
static and member variables with s underscore and m underscore. Um, and then camel case starting with Hungarian notation. Uh, not Hungarian notation. Yeah, that's Hungarian notation. Um, yeah, so if it's a string in Java, it's an object, but but uh, I treat it as a primitive. So if it's like M underscore S, whatever, camel case, that's the variable name that you'll see if you're looking at my code. Um, uh, yeah, primitives get a single character and objects tend to get two or more characters um, as the prefix, the Hungarian notation style prefix. Um, anyway. Um, there it is. David Kircher says, Almond style is the only style. Think Titty Kaka, it's Tunes Day. David, my man. Almond style. Um, Trevor Linz, Linstammer, Linstammer says, MC2, you talk like my dad. My dad was a programmer. He was very logical and explained as to how and why things are the way they are. Your streams are also a breath of fresh air to the flat earth nonsense. Well, thank you, Trevor. Uh, I appreciate that. If your dad was a programmer, then awesome. That's that's high praise. Mr. Smith says, no dog in this fight, but why do you think so many flat, earths, flat earthers feel something isn't right? What do you think is the common denominator as it affects so many? Okay. This, yeah, this gets into psychology, doesn't it? Um, and I have, yeah, I have some, some thoughts on that. I've been doing this long enough and I've interacted with enough of them. I think... I think that a lot of flat earthers have some sort of thing in their life that that left the some of them had a traumatic thing and as a result of that they found flat earth but I think for the most part they came into flat earth the way that they are and by the way that they are I mean like broken like messed up in some pretty serious ways um, not able to do science and, and math well. So in high school, they struggled through science and math, um, either, you know, barely scraped through or had to cheat to get through. Um, and then definitely after the mandatory science and math classes, they did not take any more. If they went to college, very few flat earthers did, but if they went to college, they generally did not take any STEM fields, did not study any STEM fields. I'm generalizing. There are some flat earthers that, that break this mold. So don't come at me saying, here's this one guy. Yep, there are some. This is generalization. Um, but also, I think more to the point, they came pre-ostracized, right? They, they talk about how flat earth is lonely, right? It, it, when, when you get to be a flat earther, they can't stop talking about flat earth. Their family and friends ditch them, right? So they did not have a whole lot of them to begin with, generally. And, and so what they... They can't, everybody needs community. We all need our community. And, and for a lot of people, this is our community. This should not be your only community. Please, please, please. While doing the stream, I got text messages from my friends. I haven't read them yet, but I saw them come in. You need real life friends. Definitely need real life. I'm talking to you. You know who I'm talking about. I'm talking specifically to somebody. And you know, you got to go out you got to call up your friends. You need to go get with them. You need to spend time with them. I'm happy to talk to you. It's a private, I'm a private message, people. You need to, uh, I, I'm happy to talk with you. But you, I can't be that for you. Right? you got to go see your friends. You know who I'm talking to. Uh, there's one person. If you're like, is it me? It's not you if you're asking. Right? Um, so why? Yes. So, and then, then they get into it and they find their community. And so since they find their community, that's the last thing they're going to want to put at, at risk, right? Mark Sargent is a perfect example. He doesn't have anything. If he left flat earth, his entire social structure is gone tomorrow. Every single friend is gone. The only person Mark Sargent would have tomorrow if he quit Flat Earth is his mom. Good for her. Good for her. Mark, you should quit. You should go to your mom and say, I'm sorry for putting you in a movie with me. 
You should say that, Mark. You definitely should. She didn't deserve it. But you won't, Mark. Flat Earthers won't. We know that because then they'd lose that community that we all need. So yeah, they came in pre-ostracized and it completed it for them. Um, and they lack critical thinking skills. Um, they think they have it, but they don't. Um, it's a Dunning-Kruger thing, right? They are predisposed to the conspiratorial mindset. How many of them are all about all these other things? You, you, go, to, you go to a Facebook page of a flat earther, and it comes in with the entire mandatory list of, of uh, conspiracy theories. And they're like accusing other people of being sheep. If you, you, you go to... If I can go to your Facebook page and all I know is that you're a flat earther and I go there and I say, you're going to be 11, you're going to be vaccine, you're going to be 5G, you're going to be um, uh, shootings, fake, uh, you're going to be right. All these, if you have that list, then you're the sheep. You're the sheep. All those things, but that's the conspiratorial mindset. They have to, generally, they have to have that coming into it. Uh, you know, they're all lying to you. They have to have that. All right, that's a long answer. <laughs> so what is the common denominator? They All those things. Um, that is, it, it's when you draw the Venn diagram of those people, right? There are people that are into conspiracy theories that aren't into flat earth. There are people that don't understand math that are not into flat earth. There are people that have crap critical thinking skills that are not into flat earth it's this put the venn diagram and you get that little slice in the middle but out of eight billion people that's still a significant number um oh geez the sun express think of how much money can be saved on the voyager program if 40 plus years of compartmentalization is not necessary that's oh yeah i don't know how many people maybe maybe there's not a lot that are full-time but there's people that pay attention to Voyager and are doing things with it regularly. I don't know the number. But if it was all fake, then five five years in, you'd be like, oh, it stopped working. Right? If you have a, a declared operational lifespan for something and you're faking it, why would you make it go longer? Just say, oh, it, it stopped working on schedule. We're that good. Real sickness, yeah, fake bang bang events. Um, I see spin. If you found out flat Earth, the Earth was flat tomorrow, would you join Mark Sargent in the fight? Yes, one hundred percent. My wife, she says, I always think I have to be right, and yep, I do. I do think I always have to be right, and as soon as I find out I'm wrong, I'm gonna stop being wrong, and I'm gonna start being right. So if somebody came up with evidence. Or flat earth i'm in but when i ask these flat earthers they never have they never even try They're like oh i'm just a globe skeptic you actually really think that the earth is flat and i've heard flat earthers say they would bet their life on it they would place they would stake their life on flat earth i've heard that yet when you ask them for evidence for flat earth they have nothing they always go to well if the earth is a globe and i don't understand anything about it but this is my crappy understanding of it and it doesn't match my crappy understanding of it therefore earth flat. no that's that's not stake your life that's weird Right? If you would stake your life on it, you must have really, really strong evidence for it. But they don't. Anyway, so that's the weird, the weird situation they're in. I will, yeah, definitely give me a map that works. Give me reciprocal zenith angle measurements that, that sum to 180, not more than 180. Give me a spherical triangles that aren't spherical triangles that the only sum to, uh, to 180. Um, <coughs> Give me uh, a rocket that shows at, at 300,000 feet that shows um, 
a huge amount, right? Going on towards the ice wall. Um, give me a plausible mechanism that's that's testable for the 9.8 meters per second squared downward acceleration. Um, all these things you could do. None of them, right? You're like, oh, it's buoyancy and density. That doesn't do anything. Only a dumb person would be fooled by saying the words buoyancy and density. You have to be dumb to think that. All right. Let's see here. Um, kind of went off on that. <laughs> like that. I hope it's okay. Um, let's see. Tim Davidson says, if I'm Bruce, I'm the Bruce Wayne, the Batman can say, admit it. Davidson, uh, your fingers are saying things that I think your brain might not be saying. <laughs> um, Lord Illuminous Poo says, dang, Tim, you make an us, me, you look bad. <laughs> David, all right, David Wellman, which is worth, Flurf or Pickleball? Pickleball, the game, the tennis-esque game of Pickleball. I've never played it. I've only seen people. In fact, today I saw people playing it. When I was at, uh, when I was coaching Ultimate, some people are over there with their pickleball at the tennis court near our field that we're practicing at. Um, I, I don't know. I don't have a negative view of pickleball. Um, I don't like tennis or pickleball. I just don't like it, so I, I'm unaware of it. Lord Illuminous Pooh says, I always admit when I'm wrong. In 10 years, my friends have heard it three times. So? Uh, anyway, yeah, I, I don't know. I like racquetball. But for some reason, tennis, ping pong, they don't interest me. For some reason, being in being like in half half court, that's interesting. I've played um is it volleyball, which is basically volleyball in a racquetball court, right? Um way back I've played that. I don't know. I guess I like something different. Um all right. Should I pop in just for a few minutes and see if we can get some Krakatoni? <laughs> Let's see. Sorry, Sorry, like, be a in, in my backyard, and I satellite. also got a uh, 5G on my gaming computer. So, I'm, so and Don, I'm on my satellite for bullshit. Right why, do we, why do we have satellite phones? Because I up. said there are satellites. Uh, you, said, you just said they were bullshit. No, I said there's two types of satellites. Oh, you said sense. satellites are bullshit, and then you said there were two types of satellites. There's two types of satellites. What, the real ones and the ones that you made up? <laughs> no. Yeah, there, there, there's Back only one in the day, asshole. before they I'm actually sorry, made satellites, asshole, but... when they first made satellites, they called them artificial satellites. Now, why would man call a satellite artificial? Hold on. Hold on. Because the moon is a satellite. Hold on, there wasn't guys. something Wait. already there. Hold on, Don. Hold on. Sorry. Guys, let, let's let's not dog pile so much. You guys are really dog piling him hard. Let, let, yeah, uh, we are. Pick like two pick like two people to, to go back and forth with him. Cole, while they're doing that, I'm uh, gonna live stream little, this GPS satellite from my backyard right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so so so, like, PhD Tony and, and Bob the Science Guy or something, let them two go back and forth with him for a little bit and then switch up. But you guys are really dogpiling him. Well, right now. yeah, to be honest, Cole, he's kind of deserved it. Um, but, oh, well, uh, I, yeah. I understand that, Tony. All right, come on, crack it, Tony. Come uh, on, crack it, Tony. But, um, Don, um, the moon is a satellite, right? Oh, the well, moon is a natural... natural satellite now, isn't it? Can... Um, yeah. Um, so the moon's a natural satellite. So, um, when we first put up satellites, we started talking about artificial satellites, which were satellites that we had put up with them. Now we've put up so many that basically everybody knows, um, that the moon is the only natural satellite we have. Oh, the um, only? All... Is it yeah. really the only natural satellite we have? No, it's absolutely not. Yes, it is, Don. No, not. What's the other we one? We have small what asteroids. We have. Are, no, they don't even, what he's doing is he's counting that captured uh, asteroid that they were talking about a couple of months ago. He's trying to get a gotcha. 
Yeah, that's Very a pseudo satellite. That's a pseudo satellite. It's a pseudo moon. It's not a genuine satellite. It happens. I mean, it, it it happens to be following us around, following us in our path around the sun. Um, but that doesn't make it a satellite. It is not in orbit around Earth. Actually, mm. I was not even thinking about that. But thanks for reminding me about it. Because what was what it like? Was he thinking Nimiru about? or something like that? I can't even oh remember gosh, the name Nimiru. of it. No, it but wasn't. yeah, I wasn't going to actually even try to get you a gotcha moment. But there's so many natural satellites that we have in our skies. The, um, they're not telling name, you about a, it. name a second one. Name one. Well, they call them um, artificial satellites, but they're actually natural. What are uh, natural? Say the black satellite. Man made satellite. The black natural? night satellite. And, oh, yeah, that's it. The black night or whatever they wanted to call it like years ago. Oh, my God. He did mean that. You know what natural No, no, for? no, no. I didn't. But um, oh at the end hey, of the time, right. like, that's what I was Don, trying to Come on. You're struggling go. a little bit right now. Look at the screen. That is a GPS satellite. That's GPS three, number seven, right there. I'm looking at it. You're oh. looking at it. Lights That's an actual in satellite in flight right now. That has flashlights on it, and it's 100,000 feet in the air. And oh I can my see gosh, the, light, the, the desperation. The flashlight on it. No, yeah, that's not 100,000 feet in the air. You want to know where it is? Oh I can gosh. tell you exactly what where it is. What is it, like 5 miles or 10 miles up? 20 no. miles, 100 miles? No. That satellite currently is 20,000 kilometers away. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, yeah, it's roughly 20,000 kilometers from us. So that's what, nine, 10,000 miles? 20,000 mm -hmm. kilometers? Is I don't know. Like do 12,000 miles. A bit rough on that. Yeah, you can do the math. You but can also is. confirm he this. He does. He does. You can also confirm this by taking out your GPS and looking at your location relative to that satellite. Yep. You should be able to get the. You should be able to get the satellite location for that satellite and your location, and you should be able to calculate the distance between. Them. <coughs> yeah, but there it is, right there in front so, of you. So they were able to map a light in the sky that goes across. No, all it's the not time. a light in the sky. It's and they call it a satellite, but it don't we have things called stars that do exact same thing? No. No, the stars no, are the oh streaks. Don, well, we don't have streaks. Don, those, the, the straws, those are shooting already... stars, are they not? Oh like the God. streaks are called oh. shooting stars. Oh, my gosh, Don. Stars are falling stars. No, those are not me. No, not Don. shooting stars. You want to see stars, Don? I'll show you stars. This is I'm gold. Gold. No you don't have five Gs and stars, brother. This is gold, Don. <laughs> there, I'll go ahead and I'll stop tracking the satellite. That's too funny. Oh my God. I'll stop tracking the satellite, and I'll start tracking the stars. And now what you'll see is the stars are going to be fixed in the satellite, as you can very clearly see. Oh, look at that. Is moving in, re in relationship to the stars. Fantastic, see? Devin, by the way. Look at oh, that. Is oh. So we don't have wandering stars, right? Yes, that's not a wandering star. That's a more, satellite. So you've been I, I told, want one. right? No. I want one. Somebody so told I have you just that, confirmed. didn't they? I just Don, you, are the most pathological, you are the most pathological individual I think I've encountered in my entire time um, talking Same. with Fred yeah. Others. Um, I'm oh. out of here. Thank you for the discussion. Everyone else. Yeah, I think we're pretty well done with Don. <laughs> hey, Don, I thanks a lot. Might be thanks a lot, Don. Thanks for demonstrating the characteristics, Don. Have no a nice problem. night. No problem. I'm right. so happy you can't gonna, prove me wrong. I'm gonna, Thank oh, you. Can. I just did. It's right yeah. there. We're gonna, well, I'm going to pop out. See you guys later. Thanks. All right. Oh, jeez. Don. And that was the frosting, right there. The frosting on the manure cake. Um, Don, it almost, almost like Poe. Like, so, like, he's trying to make Flat Earthers look bad. All right. Well, tomorrow, tomorrow I have a debate with Patrick Gunnels. So, somebody on Facebook said... That he thought I wouldn't debate Patrick Gunnels. Why would I not debate Patrick Gunnels? Who the hell is Patrick Gunnels? 
So, and he's talking smack. I'm like, okay, because there's been, you know, so p p typically it's go debate Dubay, debate Eric Dubay. Actually, on on my uh, conspiracy tunes channel. Um, <clears throat> I don't know which day it was, but uh, um, here the. Um, I'll, I'll pull it up. The, the, um, somebody commented, and I'll read it. It's, re I don't understand. Um, uh, all right. Is this it? I, I, I gotta show you. It's so funny. Um, do, do, do. He, he couldn't even spell Dubai right. Um, he, it's so funny. All right, there it is. I will give you the link. You can go to the link. There it is. I'll pull it up here. Um, and here is there's 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 me. That's me. And then. Uh, this is Mark Sargent must quit flat earth. So right here, we've got Robin Minge 1936 says debate with Eric Doobie or delete your YouTube channel. Simple straw man. I think, I think Robin was, um, trying to, to, to identify that Robin was straw manning. Like, I don't know why, but they didn't even get that right. But I don't know how anything has anything to do with straw man. I don't think Robin knows what a straw man is. But anyway, debate Eric debate or delete your channel. So I'm like, oh, yep, I accept. 100% I accept. Um, so I say, I accept. Now go tell your Lord and Savior, Eric Doobie, to debate me or delete his channel. You can email me, mctune at mctune.net. I await his response. Well, that was five days ago. I can tell you, I have not yet received an email from Eric Dubay. Uh, accepting my uh, acceptance of the debate. So anyway, there you go. That's that's the kind of stuff I usually get. Anyway, so this guy PJ Corrigan on Facebook said, "You go debate P Patrick Gunnels. I bet you won't." I'm like, I accept. And actually, I got an email from Patrick Gunnels. I this might be the first time somebody has demanded that I debate somebody else. That the somebody else emailed me or contacted me. So tomorrow, Patrick Gunnels is going to be 8 p.m. Central time. Um, he wanted to do it earlier in the day, but I've I'm uh, working earlier in the day. I have actually I'm going to be doing a bunch of super busy day tomorrow. So, um, uh, so that's tomorrow. He has apparently thirty thousand people on a Rumble that watch him, and uh, and he some uh, I think he's. He follows some guy named Nathan something. Um, unfamiliar with any flat earthers named Nathan anymore, because Nathan Roberts has his MIA, and Nathan Thompson is gone, so I don't know of any other Nathans um, in flat earth. But anyway, apparently he, he he's a Nathan whatever parrot. So <clears throat> anyway, um, he's going to be putting it on, on um, his channel. I'll be doing it here, so show up here. After I finish this live stream, I'll probably create the thumbnail and drop it in so that everybody can can watch along here. Um, so uh, he would stake his life on flat Earth. So you get to see tomorrow somebody that would stake their life on flat Earth. There it is. McBong's lab says, isn't there a Nathan Oakley too? Never heard of him. Um, Jake C says Nathan Jokely. Okay, could be. I don't. I don't know who this Oakley or Jokely, whatever it is. Um, but uh, yeah, what Wiggles says. What happened to Nathan Thompson? Nathan Thompson was on a tour with um, his good buddy Austin Whitsitt, and Nathan was making a fool of himself. Now, when I mentioned earlier, flat earthers are pre-ostracized. Nathan is one of these people. He, he, you know, they didn't get to where they are in life by being 
likable, right? Nathan Thompson is not likable. He's not likable before Flat Earth 2, right? So um, anyway, he, he would argue with people. He would abuse their property. He would do stuff um, that would annoy people. And then, and then he, they were some, somewhere and they got a big donation and he's like, oh, awesome. We got a big donation. Hey dudes, I'll go get beer for us. So I don't think he told them. He goes and gets a whole bunch, spends a whole bunch of money on beer and comes back and they're like, why are you spending money on beer? We've got gas to pay for. Big fight, big fight. Um, apparently he then left, uh, brought money with him apparently eight hundred dollars about with him and shortly after the the motorhome needed some fixing and they didn't have the money so uh austin had to go on and start asking for people to send them money so after that nathan thompson for good reason was basically he burned all of his bridges in flat earth very few people will still talk to him he couldn't go couch surfing like he had done so after he left that he went home to California, lived at his mom's place for a little while. Um, and then he moved to a pot farm in California where he worked for a while there. And then, you know, he had to work. So he left that. And I don't know where he is. Uh, I think he was down in the Southeast of the United States for a while, but uh, you know, not a lot of people will hang out with him in flat earth because he, he I mean, rightfully so, um, he screwed his best friends, so uh yeah beaver zero yeah but the dude had like 12 shower heads so yeah the dude with 12 shower heads is flat earth millionaire tanner stewart or t stew that's who had the 12 shower heads not nathan and they had a falling out too um for multiple reasons but one of them one of their ongoing disagreements is nathan believes in the bible and flat earth millionaire tanner stewart is a satanist he actually follows mark braun mark braun claims that he is literally satan mark braun says that people need to do a blood magic ceremony so that they can go to the north pole with him that gives them access to cross the light bridge so that they can go to the magic portal jump into the lake of fire he said lake of fire and then they can enter hyperborea that's tanner stewart that is completely contrary to the bible and so Nathan Thompson is like, I'm out. I get it. Um, Nathan Thompson also believes that there's a dome because Bible. Uh, Tanner Stewart says no dome because not Bible. There you go. <clears throat> um, S. Vector says, I would pay to see a MC Tune, PT Tony, and Jara W. Bart Cybrell roundtable discussion. That would be fantastic. That would be cool. Um, yeah, I, um, I, I don't know. Would Bart Cybrell? That'd be cool. I'd love it. Um, anyway, Tomato X Machina says three things that definitely not flat. The Earth, all the objects in space, and your mom. Thank you. You're correct. Um... I see Spin says, I always like it when the rumpus is on with you and FTFE. I like the rumpus. He doesn't let people talk much. That's the problem with the rumpus. But uh, I do like him. He's a smart guy. So, okay. People, thank you very much. I have enjoyed this. Um, I hope you have two. Be looking for two things tomorrow. Do, do, do. Um, the debate tomorrow night with Patrick Gunnels and the, hopefully the video, I need to edit it still. Uh, really, really taking it to Mark Sargent. Um, there may or may not be a, if I can make it happen, a uh, rendition of the Dreamweaver song. I don't know if it, if it works. Um, all right. You know what I need to do now? Let's see. is i got it i got the outro ready to go people thank you very much uh thanks to the super chats to the members to the patrons to everybody i appreciate it very much um 
just I'm stalling for time as it's it's doing like just, oh gosh. <laughs> Professor Parks says I will be talking with Iggy tomorrow evening. So something to watch after your debate. Oh that'll be great. Iggy is on in a week and two weeks. Two weeks from tonight I got Iggy, Iggy back. So I'll be sure to watch that. Parks, have a fun time with Iggy. Everybody else will see you later. That's what I was waiting for. Uh, oh, hold on. Oh, PhD Tony says, My apologies for going off on Don. Rude of me. No, nope. Don needed it. Don, Don, you're a very sad, sad individual. It's not even a Don. It's not even his real name. It's Don Pettit is an astronaut. He's using his guy, that guy's name. Anyway, Tony, thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Um, I, I'd only ask people to, to give me two hours. And Tony, you gave me two hours. Thank you for that. And it's always good to see you. And people were hoping for some crack at Tony. We didn't quite get it, but you did get a little heated. And we, oh, we love that so much. We'll see ya.